But that's kind yeah. of expensive. She can a lot to upkeep. <laughs> and you can have your own bathroom. And I'll make you bake good. <gasps> melon bread. She can make melon bread. That'd be super cheap yeah. in Canada comparatively. <laughs> Pocket bacon. There's a Tim Hortons that's like a three minute walk. No, no, you can't just say something like pocket bacon and leave it like that. What the fuck is pocket bacon? <laughs> Th Thomas, how would you describe pocket bacon? Pocket bacon is, is a meme that has evolved from Critical Role, um, the show. And it's basically like anytime the adventurers in the game sit down to have a meal and like because sometimes they sometimes they don't role play meals like sometimes they go like a few days in game without actually like yeah, yeah yeah okay and then you could do the thing sometimes there's that fast forward bit but sometimes when they actually role play a meal one of the characters especially always makes a point and be like is there bacon at this meal yes or no and if there is they always like okay i take like a handful of bacon and i put it in my pocket so that later <laughs> and it's a role playing thing so later if if they ever need it they always have pocket bacon to like try to subdue an animal or like if they're <laughs> like oh we're just having a snack okay well i'm gonna have some of my pocket bacon like <laughs> it's just a resource that they collect basically so but wouldn't they potentially smell like bacon then while they're wandering about you'd think so but it's a fantasy <laughs> game so <laughs> usually you forget you have pocket bacon until a few months later and then <laughs> there we go yeah <laughs> and then you roll a constitution saving through, basically. <laughs> Luckily, none of you have to do that because Sapkins here. Yeah. That's true. That is like you in the face with multi bacon if you let her figure it multi. Like bacon's pretty good. Right? If it's cured, it'll last. Yeah, it lasts. Maybe three months, maybe. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> so, yeah, Safkeen's there, Yu's there, I guess Krampus is there, Lindell's there, and our mystery guest is there inside a force bubble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mystery guest? While Xavier, all on his own, is tucked away in a building across the way um, no, that he Sofkeen's jumped into. Him. What's that? Sofkeen's in the building, too. You're in a building, but you're inside the force bubble. Okay. Uh, Xavier's the only one outside the force bubble. Um, well, him and the assailant uh, that is slinging uh, spells from somewhere. Hmm. Um, but last time we left off, uh, Lindell used a uh, very, very good uh, spell... Uh, to mm -hmm. alter the memory of one of the assailants, uh, stopping it dead in its tracks and convincing it that uh, a code word would gain you all access to whatever its inner circle is, um, signaling that you guys are friends of its master, whatever the dragon its master fiend. Is. Oh, yes. Right. So, with the word spoken, Dragon Fiend, now it has stopped its assault and escape. Um, the force bubble has deflected one spell, which kind of sizzled into nothing. Um, and we left off with kind of the end of Lindell's turn and the creature standing and bowing to Lindell. Uh, pretty silent. But then the silence breaks as it opens its mouth to speak, addressing Lindell. Well, that was a waste of time. Why didn't you say so in the first place? We could have avoided this whole mess. I was, I couldn't see your face. I was skeptical at the message I received from my master this morning. I was, wasn't sure it was you, well, to be frank, you're quite stealthy and fast. Thanks. Your master is not very wise, though. Should have informed you we'd be waiting. Now then. 
my friend does not seem to know. Perhaps yeah. we should speak the word. To him? Yes, I yes. don't know. I, I, it was, the message was very vague. I wasn't sure if there was one or two I was supposed to meet, so he may or may not be in line to be tested. Please, please, wait a moment. I must confer with my colleagues and call them off so they don't keep trying to assault you. Of course. And Lindell will, like, well, try to try to be as like as regal as possible. We'll try to try to try to walk out of the room and just leave him there, <laughs> even though she's technically bloodied. Um, and <laughs> she'll walk out like and like grab Safkeen by the shirt. But like, uh, you look around for Safkeen after you get back out oh, to right. the street. Grab you see you there the concentrating on her force wall, um, and you hear a little bit of clatter across the way from another building. Yeah, yeah. you would so be grab... looking out, looking to see if she can see Xavier. So she's oh. facing the other way. <laughs> Roll a perception okay, yeah, check. So we'll let her we'll let go you find you and, and Safkeen. Yep. So we're going out of initiative order. I'm going to go ahead and reset it descending so that if combat resumes, uh, we can go back to initiative order with uh, Xavier at the top. Um, I am going to add in the initiative of our uh, mystery character here. I rolled a 17 to see if I see Xavier out there. I'm just keeping an eye out just to you know, make 17? sure he's not dead. Just looking. <laughs> Uh, based on his stealthiness. Because you definitely, after that wall went up, would have been like, oh shit, Xavier! <laughs> uh, based on his stealthiness, yeah, you do see him. Um, you can oh. see he's kind of hugging the wall um, through kind of the broken off corner of that uh, L-shaped three-story building. Um, you can see him across the way through the kind of colonnaded structure that's dilapidated a little bit. He's way in the corner, hugged against the wall, kind of looking up and around, trying to stay out of sight. But he is staying hidden. Yeah, you can see little branches okay. coming off of his head, turning every once in a while around the corner. Okay. It's kind of hard to make him out from the debris. I'd be up at the edge of our force wall. Wait, yeah. What do we hold? Option? Yeah. Uh, alternate, I believe. Oh, I don't know what it is on a Mac. Option. Actually, I don't know either. I have a custom keyboard. That's just a symbol. It's, it's either option or control. <laughs> I have no idea. Probably option. <laughs> okay. Or command. It might be command. It's a anyway. picture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, you go out to the edge of your force wall there um, as you concentrate. Um, okay. Yeah. So what do you guys want to do? So Xavier's kind of tucked away, and he's he's looking around for the assailant, but he's trying to stay hidden because fireballs do a lot of damage to him. <laughs> Lindell, did you tie that guy up? Did you neutralize him? Is he? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Are, are, is both you and Sapkin here? You moved the whole map, David. Sapkin kind of yeah, waiting for occasion you see it sort of pick her head out and then put her head back in again. Come here, we're safe inside the bubble. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, yeah, nothing's getting in the bubble. Everybody yeah. huddle. Heal oh, herself away from the building and go come over and be like, what? Liddell puts her arms around the other's knees. As they, as they <laughs> <pull out. laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and tra change the grid size real quick on this map and see if maybe you guys can snap to it if I make it smaller. Uh, one grid cell. So if I have a smaller width, um, maybe? I, um, try that. Well, I used some magic and um, I, I altered his memory. So he believes... He received a message from his master, his god, his whatever. I was really vague about it. But from, how quiet from are someone, you being when you explain this? Like very, I like I'm whispering. Like we're yeah, all huddled. whispering. Okay. She's huddled us, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay. We we have huddled Where and Where are like, you guys huddled? Outside. I, away. I told him to yeah. stay in the building and then I would like take them maybe not to the edge of the bubble, but like pretty like around, definitely the around edge. the corner and like, like, like over here around the corner ish. And Safkeen, you get a at the map. There too. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're we're as far away as we could get. We're okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like, we're we're actively making an effort to make sure that he doesn't hear us. Okay, gotcha. Whatever that looks like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's fine. It's just for the purposes of passive perception. That's all. Yeah, maybe like around the corner, like so. Definitely not in visual range, and like definitely like somewhere out of view. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I cast some magic, and now he believes that he that his master sent him a message that someone today would speak to him a password, and if someone spoke the password, he was to ignore all other orders from his superiors and only listen to that person. And I spoke the password, and then he like got on one knee and was like, "Yes, I will listen to you." And he was like, "Oh my god." So, and you know what the best part is? The best part is there's no active magic. I'm not concentrating on anything. He's not charmed or anything like that. So it's, he thinks he thinks we're supposed to be here. So, so yeah, he thinks that um, he's he got a mess. He was supposed to find me, and I was supposed to find him because I'm supposed to test his loyalty. How can we what use that? Pardon. What does he think about us? Are we also included in this? I, I don't, I, I don't know. That's the thing is I can't read his mind or anything like that. So I'm not sure what he thinks of us. But he thinks I'm like, I'm like his master's chosen one. Can we, can um, we get him to lead us to Genevieve? I think so. I think it might do. Yeah. Because. I'm starting so to think we're really, really outnumbered here, and we might need to what? get to Genevieve and then get out. Well, here's what when I'm you thinking. say that, you hear another shh, oh. and an explosion goes off behind you guys through yeah. this three-story so building around <laughs> where Xavier is. We have two, pro- oh. two things I wanted Sorry, to talk about. Quick. Oh no, Gene- is this as Genevieve? Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. As an explosion happens, we do a camera pan to a dungeon okay. cell. Where Jen is sitting on the floor with her bells going, going low, go down in Panopticon if you stay too long. That's all. Go back. Jen, <laughs> as soon as you finish your song, you see a flicker of energy and a doorway opens up and through it, Xavier comes through with a blast of smoke before it closes. Huh? Oh, did they capture Xavier? Too? Oh, well, we don't know that. So, yeah, I think we need to. So pan back. <laughs> <laughs> so here, Actually, here are the two two yeah. things we need to decide really, really quick. Um, mm-hmm. First things first. Um, are we going to use code names? Or are we going to use our real names? Oh, yeah, that's what's important now. <laughs> very Wizard important. Name? Very, very important. Probably code names, right? No okay. One here, here, I, I thought of something. Just, just bear with me. I was thinking of instead of Lindell, I could be Listrel. <laughs> instead of soft keen, it could be soft teen, and instead of you, it could be you. What do you think? You- Yuki? Yuki is that my name? <laughs> Just add a T into everything. Oh, you. T- <laughs> you. T- <laughs> soft, I don't know. Soft. I'm just spitballing here. We're having a conversation, you know. I just. What do you, What What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I feel like our names are quite, are quite noticeable. So I feel well, like I know, but it was just. It was. Remember, how Lafayette was like, "Add a little more your name because they have one over you." Like. Well, maybe we should just give each other names based on like who we are. So, like, I could be like fish, and you could be like fairy, and like you, you could be like skull. Magical girl, mm-hmm. Lucky, and uh, <laughs> fish legs, and <laughs> while they're ta- while they're talking about names, you just wanders back over to look outside to see if Xavier got blown up. Um, you just see smoke and debris, a little bit of flame, um, and it the visibility is too bad from the the force wall. Um, but you do see a lizard-like face peer through a hole in the wall. Are you with the other? Yes. I shall call my master and tell him we are coming. 
No, no, no. I don't think you should call your master. Let's get my master. Listrell, master Listrell. <laughs> <laughs> and so here's 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 what I was so as soon as you says that Lindell knows that the jig is up, but what she wanted <laughs> to do and one that. of the reasons why why she wanted to be out of view is because she wanted to cast enhance ability on herself. Okay, yeah, and we'll she say wanted you did him that. to. So yeah, so she should, and I have to cast it at third level, so I can because okay. I'm running out of spell slots fast. Right. So I can either include Safkeen or I can include you in the enhanceability. It's your choice. Does any who's gonna do the more talking? Uh, I don't think Safkeen's much of a talker. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> she um, talks so, with her so, fists. <laughs> so you for the next hour while I'm maintaining concentration, you feel more charismatic and silver oh, yeah, don't tongue. Get and Quick like of wit. <laughs> um, so you have an advantage of on a, a, a dis, on charisma checks. Advantage on charisma oh, checks. Advantage on because you have chips. Chris, you have uh, Eagle's splendor now. Um, so anyways, Ooh, so he yeah. pokes his head out, and Linda will be like, "Yes, coming, coming." Now um, you don't want me to summon him. No, we will go to him in a minute. Just wait. There's a plan. Come on, let's go back inside the building. I have something I need to talk with you about. With, with me? <laughs> yes, with you. Mm. Are we all going in? You can, you can come. She'll, she'll be like, ah, He climbs back have- through the wall he dove through into the two-story building, kind of hugging along the forest wall until he gets to the door and kind of peeks his head out. In here? Oh, no. Yes. Please come. I must tell Stick soon to call off this assault. Yes, yes, Is that Stick. The name that's... of your companion. Yes. And and what is what is your name? I am Fathom. 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 So and will who are you? Fathom will lean into to Lindell's ear. Why are we not going with my code names? They've got like weird <laughs> nouns. We should have weird nouns too. What's your name? It's pretty dumb. It's a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll call you fish, okay? We'll go with that. Um, what was your name again, Lintel? Lis, Lis, Listrel. Listrel. Yes, and this is, and these are my associates, fish and skull. Fish and skull. <laughs> strange <laughs> names, but strangely fitting. <laughs> <sighs> now, yes, shall we go? Just a moment. You're in quite a rush to go. Um, yes, I have orders. Yes, I was told that as soon as I spoke that password, you were to ignore any other orders and I was to test you. Is that right? Mm. Please, let's get on with the test. Yes. Um, first off, Fathom... And she'll pull out her dagger and she'll just kind of play with it as she like does a slow good cop bad cop type of circle around him. <laughs> uh, she she gets a little bit like anytime she casts Eagle Splendor, uh, lawyer Lindell comes back out. Oh, cool. um, <laughs> You is suddenly terrified she's going to have to play good cop. <laughs> like, <laughs> like people. What? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now. In all my years, I've learned to be careful about things. So first things first. That is and she'll point, she'll point the dagger in his throat. Be like, tell me the name of the person you respect the most, fear the most, and has the most power over you. But be warned, I will know if you're lying. What is the dagger for? Well, you know, if it's the not the master I'm thinking of, well, then I guess we'll have to kill you. Strange test. 
I owe my life to my companion sticks. I'm, I'm trying to ask. But Styx is not the one I serve. Yes, the... <laughs> we all just like looking at each other. Like, <laughs> Wait, so he answered you honestly. Yeah. Who do you serve? Edmund. Was that Edmund? Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is all dancing around in Lindell's head. <laughs> this is what's happening. Like, you doesn't remember who Edmund is. <laughs> in <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, um, sure. Quick aside. This was like yesterday for short expectations. Uh-huh. But uh, here, if you want, I can copy and paste the scrying that Lindell did. Okay, so quick pan back right. to the dungeon cell. Xavier comes in, uh, brushing himself off, not coughing because he doesn't have breath, um, slightly on fire and kind of pats himself out. <sighs> You're on fire. That stung Save, a bit. Ah, We're good. good. I didn't uh, apparate into a wall. That's nice. Genevieve, you came here. Where, where are we? I, I, I'm deduced we're underground. That's, that's about as that's far as good. Yeah. Hmm. Did you teleport in a down prison? Here? Yeah, in a prison. Yeah. Well, I mean, I used can't... my last dimension door to get down here. It was a shot in the dark, but somebody's shooting fireballs at us up there. That seems bad. How how far down did you come? Do you know? Did you just kind of jump? I sense it was around 390 feet. Roughly. Oh, wow. We're really far down. Um, can we I look around for a second just to make sure there's no portals, holes, anything to see outside. Yeah, you look around. It's just a carved out um, kind of recess into a rock wall um, and metal bars that are closing you guys in. Um, there's a little bit of a carved out, uh, almost like a window to the next cell and bars in between it as well. Oh, is there anybody in the next cell? Uh, go ahead and climb up. Make a perception check for me. Hello. <laughs> perception. Are you going to make a noise too? Yes, I say hello, just like I did. 17. 17. Uh, you see a couple of rats skitter away from like a pile of what looks like a burlap of some sort in a, in a pile in the corner with some hay that's like loosely spread out. It smells awful in there. Um, you can hear the buzzing of flies over that pile of uh, burlap. I, th I think there's something dead in there, Xavier. They might have kept it here mm. too long. Maybe I can reach it and get a sample. No, uh, it's too maybe far away. I can't totally say that. I mean, you just maybe just leave it. It doesn't smell great. Um, my plan yes. was to stay here. Somebody came back and then try to make some escape. But now that you're here, we could get out and explore. Let's see if I've got anything I can do. Um, I can jump us through the gate easily. That's no oh, you problem. can. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of spent. I'm fully rested. I mean, I've been sitting here waiting for something to happen, so perfect. I've always wanted to try to pick a lock with my branches. <laughs> Mind I mean, if I give it a shot before that... we take the easy yeah. way? Yeah. All right. So he's going to whittle on that he's a little bit. We'll pan back to uh, to Lindell and you. At the same time, though, too, singing Xavier's theme song about his roots okay. made for walking. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Suits are made for walking. Um, when, like, I, because I remember Lindell scried, but I don't think Seda was there. I think I was off doing something. So when did no, Lindell Lin explain that to the group? Did was you Lindell there would have explained it over breakfast. Yeah, um, that next morning. Right. Uh, what day was this? Uh, you so, got up yeah. a little bit earlier, I think, and did Jen, something. Lindell and Safkin. I think it was just three. Yeah, this was so. This was the day before we went to the. You guys went to the library. 
You oh, Lindell, the library to do research? you did your hallow spell, and then while the rest of them were gone, it, I think it was your last spell slot of the day when you went back yeah. to the room. Okay. So yeah. you, so yeah. you wouldn't have heard about this, right? So she would have told gone. you this. Like this oh, is this okay, is very yeah. much like plot the defining day, information. She, yeah, right. the next day over breakfast or supper at some point, she would have told you guys that she had scribed because because it was I think a it was discussion. The previous morning, right? Was it the previous? Like today, I think it was yesterday's morning. Because she, I remember having a conversation with everyone about, okay, I've got all these things, all these people that I can scry on. Who should I scry on? Who would be the most effective person to further the right. plot for me to scry on? And we had decided on LB because that seemed to be the, the most whatever. So right. with LB's letter, she had scryed on LB and this is what she got. I have a feeling like there were other people around when she scryed. But I didn't necessarily yeah. write that in my notes. I think you and Xavier were off. I think that's what yeah. happened. We were doing right. something else. And then some other folks were around when you did it. But then you explained it to everybody when you reconvened the next morning. Okay. All right. So you yeah. would react to Edmund. She knows who Edmund is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you follow Edmund. Interesting. We, I got my message from someone close to him, but certainly above his status. I'm not aware of anyone above Edmund. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll get to that. Yes, send a message to Styx and call him off. Let's go talk to Edmund. He'll clear things up. You see him reach into his pocket and begin to pull something out? I'm just, I've got my dagger still out, but like, you know, like casually watching him, but I'm really readying to toss it at his neck if he pulls yeah. something funny. Okay. Uh, you see. will hold um, chill touch. And so her hands will start frosting over. Yep. <laughs> Relax. It is a piece of copper wire. <laughs> he pulls out a p little piece of copper wire and says an incantation under his breath. And the copper wire fizzles kind of with a spark. And then you see him put his fingers to his ear. Sticks. They have used the code word. We are not to attack them. We will bring them back to Edmund. Do you understand? Mm. What is he has called off his assault. Wonderful. Now, I'm, just to be clear, I'm not sure if Styx received a message or not. I think I was only told of one that I was supposed to test. Uh, you wants to see the swipe scene over to Styx where he's like, code word? <laughs> code word. <laughs> Okay. What whatever message came in reply um, was uh, agreeable or acceptable to fathom. You can tell, but yeah. I mean, you could roll an insight check maybe if you wanted to try and learn more. Yeah, his hackles didn't go back up. He is no. agreeable. Agreeable or feigning agreement. If you wanted to do an insight check, I'd let you. Uh, five. Uh, twenty-three. 23. Yeah, you can tell that whatever came back was totally agreeable and n no red flags are raised. Yes. Now, while we wait for Styx, I believe there were, I was supposed to test your loyalty. And Styx is already here, most likely. <laughs> well, not. You can't get through the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah. Mm. While we're waiting yes, for this. That's a good point. While we're waiting for this false wall to go down, I want you to do a handstand for me. Mm. Immediately. Hops on his arms and... Yeah, really good. Handstand. He starts holding it. He kind of cocks his head back up backwards. And Very good. Now, you. just one arm. Only one arm. Just one. He struggles a little bit. Good. He maintains now, it. Now, recite to me the alphabet. In what language? Common will start with. All right. He goes ahead and recites the alphabet for you. <laughs> 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 
you will. May I come back to my feet now? Yes. No. You <laughs> yeah. Effortlessly, just springs back up to his feet. Yeah. You would step outside and start looking in all directions for this group where Sticks is supposed to show up. Roll perception check. <laughs> so can just gonna stand there and keep a straight face as much as Natural possible. Natural twenty. Natural right, twenty. Uh, yeah. You see Ooh. a. You see a few whiskers of a large cat-like humanoid that are peering over the edge of the second story, um, right above you. Oh, up? <laughs> yeah, the building with a two on it, it's on the upper story. Hmm. I think our... Uh... <laughs> I don't know what the word is. I want to say convoy. Envoy? Our <laughs> chaperone is here. <laughs> Let's let's go, Fathom. Just do keep it under your hat what we talked about, all right? Yes. Uh, I can do that. Uh, right here is where you see it, Sina. Kind of on the corner of this building with the two on it. Well, I don't. I didn't see a ping. Is yours pinging? It is. Dang! Not I on my screen. I don't see a ping either. I'm gonna re. Load. Well, load. since you saw it, I'll go ahead and reveal. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, there. I can see. Yeah. It. Um, let's walk out. Fathom, you call him off, and I'll tell my compatriots to dump the bubble. Fathom walks out into the boardwalk and looks around, eventually sees the whiskers that you see, and uh, sticks. Uh, you can come down now. Cole, you can drop the force bubble. You before you drop the force bubble, yeah, you just like look back you and do not see Six moving. What? Six is staying put. Six, why don't you follow? What's what is wrong, Master Lestrell? I'm just gonna move back towards Lindell. He's not what's... moving for some reason. Once Adam, what's practice? going on? I'm not, not sure. Can I go check on him? No. Yes, but be warned. I was I was told there might be some a party of insidious nature working within our group. Just be careful. Roll a deception check for me. Ten ten. A total of twenty. Not natural. 20. Think I had advantage because otherwise that would have been an eight. So <laughs> he looks a little confused and um, looks back at you, uh, Lindell, and looks down. Someone from your own group is working against you. No, someone from our group. And she looks at him meaningfully. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why you? Do you uh, <sighs> person. Why so do you think you, the is the force wall still up? The force wall is still up. Okay, you, you have would... about maybe three or four minutes left on it. What? It's a ten-minute spell, right? Oh, is it? Or is it, it one hour. minute? It's ten know. minutes, isn't it? I thought it was ten minutes. Okay. So you'd have like three or four minutes left on it. Um, I would come over. I've just been moving over towards Soft Keen. Because I want to communicate to her that once this comes down, mm. it's not going back up. I'm tapped. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't know. If we should... Are you prepared to you know, fight a feline? <laughs> I'm just going to be behind Sofkeen at this point. It's gonna... Sticks, what is wrong with you? Her. Come down here. I don't think that cat trusts us. I don't trust that cat. Lindell, Lindell will try to make, and I, I don't know if this is exactly what she would say exactly, so I'm, I'm happy to just make a persuasion roll if you want. But she would say, she would loudly, uh, not necessarily like booming, but loud enough to make sure that he could hear. Uh, she'll say something to the effect of, sticks we were sent here by Edmund. Drop the act. We're going to go talk to him and sort this all out. The 
cat-like humanoid steps out onto the edge of the second floor, looking down about maybe 14, 15 feet up. Looks over the edge and crosses its arms, all dressed in black with a, a hooded cowl uh, similar to um, what uh, Fathom is wearing. Looks mm. over the edge. This one does not trust you. I didn't ask you to trust me. I just asked you to drop your assault and come out. What have you done to my associate? I didn't do anything to him. Sticks, what are you talking about? I am fine. Mm, Something is off. You can certainly think that. Let's go talk to Edmund and we'll sort this all out. Hmm. I have at least one of yours. I will make a trade. He's here of his own free will, right, sir? I'm not keeping you chained or bound or magicked of any kind. No, this one uses the code word. We are fine. Come down. Mm, my worry, exactly. And you see him start to cast a spell. Well, the force bubble, so... I'm so He's invisible. Oh. Um. Oh shoot. Uh, how many minutes on the force wall? Should I keep it up? About three. About three minutes. Fathom, Fathom, I asked you to keep that message under your hat. He might not have gotten a message about the code word as well. He might be I the one we're looking with for. With my life, you do not understand. Something is going on. Okay. 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 He's off. Why doesn't he trust you? I'm not sure. Maybe someone is manipulating him. Maybe Linda, he's being manipulated. That's right. Bad cop. Let's bad, bad cop. cop. <laughs> what is this bad cop? <laughs> Catman, if you don't make a trade, we're going to kill your best friend right now. And then... <laughs> are you, how, seri how serious are you about that? I still have a force wall up. I'm deadly serious. <laughs> All right. Roll a persuasion or intimidation check. <laughs> Because of Eagle Splendor. <laughs> Wait, and advantage? Lindell's gonna whisper at Fathom, be like, please don't worry, I promise she won't hurt you. Yes, I know. It's, it's all just to get my friend out. Persuade... Wait, persuasion or? Uh, intimidation. What is it? Oh, intimidation. Mm. Ah, my persuasion is a plus, my intimidation is a plus zero. So a 12. I intimidation. I know. Can she help me intimidate? Huh? Uh, no, yeah, what do you, how do you want to help? Go grab him. Grab him by the neck. Let's me. <laughs> put him in a chokehold. <laughs> That's intimidating. I mean, how far away you know? is that guy? You're not sure. He's invisible. You're oh, stuck in the force wall. I'm just trying yeah, to... Yeah, I don't want to move the force wall right now, but I have a plus four with my intimidation. Well, what are you going to do to try and intimidate the cat further? You will pull out her crossbow and just aim it at the dude's head. At the reptilian's head. Just point blank, just point yeah, it at his head. point blank. <laughs> Sticks, please. They yeah. are not joking. Yeah, Sticks, please. Yeah, I just keep it up. Really not joking. <laughs> there is no response. You don't think it's working. Okay, I'll pull back the crossbow. <laughs> yeah, you pull, you pull back, you cock the crossbow. Wait a minute, is she serious? As, a, as I'm holding the spell, how long do I have on the force wall? As this, yeah, I cast it. I should know an exact amount. Two and a half ish. Two and a half ish minutes. Lindell, we need to make this trade. How are we going to make the trade? Do you know a way to tell you what? Why don't you just tell us the route to get to Edmund quickly and safely, and we'll meet you there and we'll sort this all out. Ah, uh, quickly. It is very difficult to get down there, but I, I can show you. Yeah. If we hurry. Okay, let's just go quick. You show us the way. Let's get down yes. there and we'll sort the cell out. Uh, tell me, does this force wall move with you? No, it does not. Do you think no. you can do anything to help fend mm. off Styx's attacks? Yes, if I will do my he... best. But and he, he is a spellcaster, much more powerful than myself. I am more... So he is a spellcaster. I am more <laughs> like the bow and the crossbow. 
Well, our fish friend can move very quick on our feet, but mm -hmm. our spellcaster is not so much, so we'll have to keep a close eye on making sure she stays safe. I do have these. And he pulls out a crossbow bolt and loads it into his crossbow and then takes out flint and tinder and gets ready to strike it. I can create a diversion. That's good. We don't want to hurt him, right? We don't know if he is one of the oh, insidious creatures or not. He's a slippery one. All right. I'm going to trust you. Let's follow you. And Linda, like, looks at her other party and be like, are we okay with this? Is this a good plan? Is this okay? We'll follow him. Yeah. When I make the diversion, you must run quickly. Go straight oh, down yeah. the path towards the edge of the cliff. Okay. Straight doors. I will meet you. Hold on in just a second. So I will meet you makes... on the first landing. There are three two-story buildings. I will meet you there and show you the rest of the way. But do not go past that. There are traps. Cliff. Right. All right. Cliff. I'll drop the wall on the countdown, whoever is making that decision. And, yeah. Three, two, one. Go. She'll drop the wall. Okay, you drop <laughs> the running. wall. Um, you see kind of a little shimmer of arcane energy where the edge of the dome was as it recedes down to the ground. He locks the crossbow bolt in and lights it. I want to hold holds it up spells. at the three-story building and says, mm -hmm. run! He shoots the crossbow bolt. It sticks into the third story of that building and explodes like a fireball. Oh, I don't have yeah, he's got them free he's got and them smoke and we're running. Uh, you know, dust yeah, just okay. uh, obfuscate the entire area um, on the upper stories of these buildings, leaving just enough breathable space in a story for you dash guys to action, run dash around action. the corner. <laughs> um, so all of you guys are going to dash down to that first landing. Um, yeah. You can see loading a second crossbow bolt. Um, the uh, lizard creature Fathom uh, begins to run behind you guys as you make your way down kind of carefully trying to run down these rickety uh, uh, boardwalky stairs down to the first landing between these uh, three two-story buildings um, right here on the map. Oh. Okay. You make it down there journey. and um, all of you guys when you reach that landing um, you can hear from the top of the stairwell, um, Fathom yells out, uh, Watch out for the false plank. It is the third one down. Leap over it. Leap action. Leap action. <laughs> okay. So all of you guys are going to jump over that, that third plank in the, the stairwell that leads down to the second landing. Stop at the second landing, he yells behind you. <laughs> Good to a stop down here. Okay. Um, when he gets to the second landing... Um, he yells back down to you guys again, and we'll kind of go theater of the mindy now, because you're going to begin your descent down. Um, you see now from the stairwell that points down um, to kind of the, the bottom of this one-story building, it is just a sheer drop-off, 300 feet down to the water. There are some rooftops that kind of jut out, and, you know, like other structures that are piled up um, that might catch your fall, but it is a long way down, and it's getting breezy the closer you get to this edge. Um, so you can hear the wind kind of creaking these wooden buildings. Um, it is not for the faint of heart. Um, Fathom yells down, quick, into the diagonal, go into that one-story building and down. Running after him. Yep, <laughs> running after him. Um, he leaps over that third board. Give me just a second. Okay. Uh, he leaps down uh, to the landing off that third board and rushes into the building behind you, catching up with you guys. Um, it doesn't seem as though Styx is following or attacking yet that you can see. So he hasn't uh, loosed another fireball or anything like that? No, he has not. Okay, good. Uh, let me hang on just a second. I, I still have my crossbow in my hand as I'm running, too. Okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm gonna I will gladly real try real to shoot... A lizard in the face. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's our friend. You guys, you guys make it through into that one-story building, and you can see there's a hatch in the floor with a ladder that leads down. Um, he goes over to the edge of the ladder and waves his arm. Come on, quickly, down the ladder. And he's, I guess, going to help you guys one by one as you climb down the ladder. Yeah, yep. jump, jump down, down the ladder. Okay, fast as possible. 
I'm going to make three more rolls real quick just to see if anything happens between now and the time you get to your goal. Now, your target is to get to the house, right, you? With the smoke coming out of it? Well, if that's where he's, if that's where Edmund is, we're, we're following him. Do you want to take a moment, a brief second, just to explain that? Well, no, wait, we don't have to explain it. Okay, Lindell you're just you're along said, for the ride. Lead us to Edmund. Yeah, okay. he's taking us and to Edmund. So I guess maybe why don't we, while we're walking, while we're running, I want to try to track where the house with the smoke is or ask you to track yeah. where the house and the smoke is in relation to where we end up. Or where we're going. I mean, yeah, okay. if if he start leading us to that house, I would yell out, like, that's the house! <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, hang on just a second. We wouldn't know that's where Edmund is, but if he starts leading us there, I'll have a little exclamation about that. <laughs> all right, I want um, everybody to make an, either a series of athletics oh, or no. acrobatics checks. Uh, three of them to match what I just rolled for sticks. Three athletics or acrobatics checks. Okay, Either one, whichever one you want. Three of three. Okay. This is basically like a skill challenge to see if you can outrun him. Great. But you guys are getting a little bit of a bonus because you have uh, Fathom's help. So do we each read out our three? Uh, yes. So, um, well, I'll just tell you the DC. Just tell me if you're above or below. Um, so the DC for this first roll is 13. Safkeen, how'd you do? First roll. Uh, 13 on the news. 13 on the news. Uh, okay. Lindell? Nine. Nine, and that, you? That being hurt is catching up with her. Sure. Uh, my first roll was 17. 17. So, okay, so that's a success. So next one, DC 15. Safkeen. 21. 21, nice. Wow. Lindell. 8. 8, and you? 4. 4, okay, <laughs> that is a failure. So he's going to gain on you a little bit, but he's not there yet. Uh, all right, last one, DC is 16. Safkeen? 20. 20, nice. Lindell? 14. 14, and you? 20. 20. That's a success. 30, okay, 20. so you've outrun him. You've made it all the way through yeah. <laughs> with all of oh, the instructions. God. With all thank of the you instructions. Thank you so much for the party. You are. <laughs> yeah. It is Plus quite a maze. Yeah. It is quite that, a maze. A cacophony of, of, of ladders and staircases, rickety things that um, you can even see little like uh, loops that have been tied with rope to catch people's ankles as they walk across <laughs> things. Um, shims that are shoved in things that if you take that just that one wrong step, the whole bridge would collapse or, you know, your roof would fall in if you... Um, step on this board and, and move this log in just the right way, the whole building would collapse on top of you. Um, you even see that there are a few like explosive devices with trip wires that you're instructed to leap over. But you're in such a hurry that you don't really get to inspect them much, but you can tell that this thing is littered with traps to keep people mm -hmm. away. Um, and if you had to tried to do this without him... <laughs> yeah, we yes, it, it would have been very off. difficult. Um, oh so God. eventually you do make it to where you, you remember that collapsed tower. Um, it's cut right down the middle. Instead of yeah. taking the walkway above, you actually jump down onto this long house that's kind of, uh, uh, looks like the tower broke in half over the top of it. And there's a split in this massive stone tower that you guys can run through across the top of this roof and then drop down to the next platform. And right there, down below, about a story down, you can see there's the house with the chimney. There's no smoke currently coming out of it, um, but there's a walkway that wraps around it and a door. And he leads That's you the house that killed Krampus! Krampus. He leads <laughs> you to the doorway. He stops at the doorway and says, there's a tripwire across the frame. Jump over and get inside. Edmund will meet you there. I will keep a watch out for sticks. Quickly! <laughs> I'll just run in there. Jump jump in there, I mean. Okay, all of you guys, yeah, you hop over the little tripwire in the doorway, and you are now in a small room that I don't have a map for, darn it. I should have made a map for it. Uh, let's see. It's okay. Small room. Uh, just a second. When we jump through here, are there people in the room? Is Edmund in here? Yeah, what do we see? Okay, the there is... Him. What looks like a uh, a small house, it's square, 
Um, but the area that you jump into through the doorway is an L shape. It goes straight back and there's a, a door, just plain looking door on the other side of the wall across the way. And then it L's to the left and around the corner to the left, there is a, uh, big stonework fireplace. Um, and it looks like there are some logs in there that have been recently burned, um, but there's not currently any embers or smoke coming out of it. Um, and the L shape, uh, there's a bedroom, and there's no door on the hinges. Um, it's just like an open square room with this old bed frame that's kind of dilapidated and fallen apart. Um, there's a, a broken table and chair kind of shoved in one corner. Um, the only things of note in here are the fireplace, that has been recently used, and the mysterious doorway on the opposite side. Um, and it looks like, because of the size of and shape of this house, that wall in the back of the house butts right up against the cliff face. So we have a moment that we're, we're in a building and there's no one else around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you hear uh, Fathom kind of uh, jump back up onto one of the rooftops and you hear his feet kind of shimmy up a, up the way and then stop and right about this time the door in front of you opens up and through it steps a very finely dressed man um let's see if i can describe him real quick where is my page on him so wait, this is the exterior door or an interior door? This is the one mysterious door that looks like it butts up against the cliff face. Hmm. Well, let me get my notes out for this part. This portion. Uh, I have the uh, description I somewhere. I was hoping Lindell was like outside of the the jail, so we could just get Jen involved again. <laughs> Couldn't be that Helpful. easy. Xavier's using his finger. It's going to take a while. <laughs> um, while I get my notes up and everything, if you guys want to take a little break, just use the bathroom real quick. Give me like three minutes to set up. Okay. So we'll just have a, a, a powwow then in the meet. Do you guys... Should I? What is that? Are we just, you know, what should we do? Are we just? Should we just wait and talk to Edmund? What do you think? Oh, this is like before the door starts opening. Yeah, yeah. Did you see all those traps? We are so screwed. I'm so <laughs> glad that magic worked. Oh my god. Um, hey, should I send a message to Edmund or send a message to LB? I know what they look like. I know who they are. I can send them like a telepathic message to expect us. Telepath send a message to Jen to expect us. We need to get to Jen, and then we're going to go find the charred remains of Xavier. I didn't even tell you guys about that explosion. <laughs> yeah, what? Jen, he's there, funny, when you, he? were, you guys were arguing over names, <laughs> and I walked over, and Xavier was gone. <laughs> Maybe he disappeared. Maybe he Like dimension door gone, or like cloud of ash gone? Well, there was a cloud of ash. We're just going to hope for the best. <laughs> He is made of wood. It's not a good... From now on, I'm just going to douse him in water whenever we go anywhere that he might be struck by fire so that he won't be on fire. Perpetually wet. We'll just keep him Every five to ten minutes, just a good dousing. It couldn't hurt, okay. I'm sure. That way. It might be good for him. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to see if I can use the letter that we received from LB as leverage to talk to Edmund to let him, I don't know, converse with us, tell us what's going on. I, what do you guys think? I don't know. I... No, we could just letter. banish him. We I mean, could just banish sure him, run knows, past him. <laughs> What's that, Safkin? Are you sure that Edmund knows LB? Yes, I saw, that was my scry. Remember I told you yesterday, the day before, they were in the same room and Edmund walked up to LB and was like, what are we going to do with all this contraband? And LB was like, just give me a minute. I'm being lazy as a fuck. Um, and... Um, so they know each other, and it seems like LB is Edmund's superior. What happens if they hate each other? And what happens if they ask? What happens if Edmund doesn't trust us and is like, what's LB's real name? And we're like... So I think I'm going to go along the lines of where, where, where Cat Colchester sent us 
to speak to LB yeah. or Edmund? Does that work? Yeah. Is that a good? To take off some of the merchandise from them to help alleviate it. Yeah, they have since to get we're helping them. with the contraband, maybe? Or, um, I don't know. Jenny's really good at this stuff. I'm already good at this stuff. She's really good at this stuff. I wish Jen was here. I'm just really glad I haven't had to play good cop. <laughs> I just have bad cop. I thought, like, <laughs> I've got an obsidian dagger in my crossbow out. <laughs> I really don't understand okay. politics on this island. <laughs> if it comes up again, you can be bad cop, I promise. <laughs> Safkin, what do you think? What, sh how should we come at this? I want to try to resolve it without killing anyone else, ideally. I'm pretty hurt. I'm almost out of magic. It's true. I mean, let's see. Let's see. We're talking. I don't know. Let's ask Krampus's opinion. Krampus, do you want to keep the person who shot you alive? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So you're just like the strong and silent type? Strong. <laughs> I'm like four feet tall and emaciated. My cheeks are all sunken in for a necromancer. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're like the best bodyguard. The one that's like super thin. Yeah, um, and no one just, expects yeah. to be like a, a black belt or something. Very, very translucent. Um, the only reason you would have a black belt in anything is because her favorite color is black and she doesn't yeah. wear any other color. And if I embroidered Dude, it myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, look it's fine if anything gets testy i'll be the muscle if he's a yes. pirate i'll yes. speak to him and pirate yes. yeah yeah just, if there's any sort of there's lots of i saw lots of like crash ships in in the bay so they're, they're probably some kind of smugglers or pirates or something so if you have any like suggestions or pirate drug let's workshop it and we'll just go you know if you have any suggestions if he moves on us, I'm banishing him. <laughs> okay, guys, I think I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, does anyone actually need to pee? No. No. I'm okay. okay. All right. So, yes, the door begins to open. So, of you guys, who has the highest passive perception? Not me. Uh, probably uh, not, not me. Uh, like 14. 15 or above-ish? What's yours? No. no? Okay. Uh, good to know. Uh, ten. 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 All right. Uh, so, yeah, the, wow. the door begins to crack open. And a figure, very well dressed um, in nice, like, colorful pantaloons and kind of a uh, weird little, like, vest type thing that's striped and almost like iridescent colors. Um, looks very opulently dressed, has some rings. Um, actually wears one large hoop earring on one ear. Um, but it's a weird, like, John Malkovich-looking guy. <laughs> He's kind of, like, <laughs> balding, that? bit of a comb-over, mm. old, got these um, weird beady eyes. Um, John Malkovich, I'll go... I'll... Human. Um, but walks through the door and shuts it behind him. <laughs> Turns and greets you all. Yes, welcome to... The Black Market Society. I am Edmund. It is ple I am pleased to make your acquaintance. So, what were your names again? My name is Listrell. Listrell, is Edmund, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Half Skull Langer. and Fish. They're my bodyguards. Skull and Fish. Uh, okay, weird names. Yes. So, Fish. Uh, mm, Triton. <laughs> Interesting. And uh, what was it? Skull? Uh, hmm. That's Pharos? God damn it. <laughs> Not Pharos. <laughs> you don't seem to like the Pharos. No. <laughs> uh, I see. Private contractor. Friend? I don't. <laughs> Are you a private contractor for the same type of work or. Edmund, too many questions when you first meet a client. Oh, forgive me. Rude. Let me tell you about myself, of course. So you have made it to the secret entrance of the Black Market Society. Congratulations. Not an easy task. Thank you. Did uh, my minions give you any trouble? Wendell looks at, like, the multiple arrow wounds, bullet holes. She's at, like, mm. less than half health. The blood... <laughs> 
Apologies. Mer it's uh, meant to be difficult. Yes. How are you all feeling? We would feel better, Edmund, with some refreshments and some nice chairs, don't you think? They're waiting inside. Now, before you enter, I must make you aware, the Black Market Society is a very well-kept secret on this island. Uh, it's part of that whole, you know, balance over order thing. We're the balance. Not the order. <gasps> Wait, Wait all of this? we went through all of this to go shopping? We're here to go shopping? God damn it! Mordok, <laughs> you are so pissed off. I might have things you're interested in, but most of them are clean. Is there a trash can in the room to kick? She's just gonna... uh, yeah, there's, there's a little like rubber bin you can kick and kick it across the room. You kidnapped our friends for a shopping trip? Well, I didn't know such thing. Now, my watchdogs, I can't, uh, I can't really speak for their actions. Please, we can continue with the pleasantries when you get a glass of wine, a cushion, and if you could bring our friend out of your dungeon. This is a waste well, of time! Pleasantries I'm... are soon to come, <laughs> but I do want to make sure that uh, you are doing what you want to do by entering the Black Market Society. You see, once you come in, there's no going back, so to speak. Oh, there's no going out from the shopping mall! Lindell, Lindell, <laughs> corner, we need to... <laughs> Your friend doesn't seem to know much about what we do. Yeah, I don't um, care about she's, what you do. She's been hired because of her powers, not because of her brains, apparently. Um, oh my god. Just a moment, he please, reaches up and, me... and twirls a little bit of a very weak mustache that he's growing. Okay, just, just a moment, Edmund, let me confer with my, my <laughs> companions. I do a puddle up everyone, huddle up. Mm, yes, please take your time. He leans back against the doorway and just waits. Oh, Wendell? This is the only cause I didn't think this was going to be a thing entirely. And the whole point of the whole thing, I knew, I knew that had something to do with it. Oh my gosh. Cares. I'm trying to hunt down a, I'm trying to hunt down a genie. I'm trying to feed a demon. We have got meetings with the council. Like this is so stupid. Are yeah, we gonna? What? What? Do you, what could you possibly want to buy from these people? I'm not here to buy something. I want to get Jen back, and I want to find out who is LB and what's LB's involvement. Well, I can definitely say I'm mad that a shopkeeper stole our friends. <laughs> like I agree. I agree. I'm angry. I hear you. But we gotta play the game to get the results. Oh my god, I hate these games. He Soft King, clears what about his you? Throat. You want to go shopping, <clears throat> Soft King? Excuse me. <laughs> what is it exactly yeah. you want? Well, I want, I want our, our compatriot back. We demand, we demand Genevieve. Genevieve of, uh, wait, wait, what's Genevieve's full name? <laughs> so it is Genevieve. I had my suspicions. No. Now then, well, is there anything you'd have like to questions about who her identity is? Hmm? You have well, a question about Oh, well, one of my compatriots thought they might know her. But it's good to confirm. Now then, you've given me some information. Perhaps I can give you some. What would you like to know? I would very much like to have a chat. As Cat Colchester has been sending me missives, and I need to pass a message on to LB, please. Cat Colchester, a name I haven't heard in maybe three years? Yes, well, she's we own her house now. <laughs> <laughs> Silver <laughs> District, right? <laughs> kind of near one of the one of the crossing towers. <gasps> Now they I know where we live. We're gonna die. Great. So, <laughs> LB, I believe you are talking about. Well, maybe she should introduce herself. We're trying to be subtle here, Edmund. Uh, yes, please. Why don't we do that first? I'll leave it up to her. You can tell her that Cat Cole trust us sent us. That'll probably get her attention. Hmm, I believe she's been trying to contact Cat as well. Let's head inside. We'll discuss it further. I want to make you very aware 
of what you'll be getting into if you cross through this doorway. He stops for a moment and puts his ear up, or puts his ear, uh, hand up to his ear, listens for a moment, and you hear him reply, no, call it off. Go back. Yes, I'll take it from here. Sorry about that. Uh, now then, uh, what, what were we talking about? You were going to tell us something about what would happen if we crossed this threshold? Yes, the rules. Oh, there just have to be rules with every secret society. You see, it's so annoying. Now then, if you cross through this door, you may not mention anything you see behind it. Clear? Upon Clear. penalty of death. Swift death. Yeah. We try to maintain our balance, so to speak. And as a result, we are left alone. We want to keep it that way. Are y'all like anti-government, anarchist? We operate outside the government with its own knowledge. Oh, well, me too. <laughs> Very well. You'll get along great here. Yeah. Now then, rule number two. Rule number two, okay. Um, we will provide services, but we expect payment, either monetary, but I prefer the actions of our compatriots over raw currency. What's action? Genevieve's not there. <laughs> um. <laughs> What me? What this means is, Sorry. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yes, yes, we know how secret societies work. Edmund, continue. Okay. Scratching anybody's back to get Jen back. She's not a you thing. Know, we're, we're not buying her. her. Have you <laughs> met a drug deal? Keep cool. Come on. I don't need yes. drugs. <laughs> I have a demon. <laughs> With this newfound knowledge, you will gain behind these doors comes pain. You must be. Ready for it. Knowledge is pain. Do you understand? I thought knowledge was power. Or a pain there and power, power. that one thing. There is power, but there will be pain. Interpret it how you like. It's hard in a second language. <laughs> Do you agree to the terms? Can you be more specific about what you mean by pain, please? It's different for everyone. If we, if we go through the go door, through. can we have Jen back? <laughs> yes, of course. All right, then we're going through the door. Let's go. Wait. Perhaps I if can... you give us our yes, friend back, what do you expect in return from us? Oh, nothing. Anything. Nothing at all. Would you believe, Edmund, the scales are a bit tipped in our favor, as not only have you shot us through with arrows and crossbow bolts, but you've stolen our companion away from us simply for us to gain entry. So I don't believe simply returning her is more along the lines of rebalancing the scales, wouldn't you say? Hmm, perhaps. Lindell, I know you love to shop. You love a great deal. But can we just have Jim back and leave? Is that on the table? Um, Skull, that first off, may I remind you that my name is Listrell. Oh, and yeah, Listrell. Second, let me remind you, we're not here to do any shopping. Let's just go inside and just deal with it. Your friend here, Skull, was it, brings up a very interesting point. I can return your compatriot to you, and you can leave, never to return. But? Alive, alive, return your compatriot alive. Yeah, yeah, alive. I mean, dead to. I've been yes, wanting somebody to put onto a sick body. We're not barbarians. <laughs> we are not barbarians. <laughs> we merely uh, provide uh, a service to those that normally would not get that service. What's the but? There is no but. You said if we enter. The oh, the rules. 
you know, the knowledge is pain, the whole deal. <laughs> Lestrell. Lestrell. Yes. Happy. What do you need behind door number three over there? Oh, we were asked by Kat to speak to LB, right? And so is if LB nothing else, behind the door? Yes, yes, she is. She is. Edmund already confirmed that. So if we go through the door, not only will we get a chance to speak to LB, but we'll get you an back. And if you would like to stay outside, that's totally fine. I will go inside and have a quick chat, and I'll see you in a minute. Oh, no, we can't piecemeal this deal. It's either all or none. I'm not in a position to owe anyone anything. I believe, Edmund, it, 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 to be understanding of your rules, we only owe you something if we get something in return. Is that correct? The knowledge behind this door would be part of the favor. And how so much... I may want to call on you. And just to be clear, you did say that receiving financial beneficiary is acceptable as opposed to just actions. How much financially are you thinking that we would have to invest in your group but without having to owe you a favor? It's not exactly how it works. It's more, you're a part of our group now and we may call on you. But we may be at your disposal as well, a very powerful tool. And see, you may call on us, but according to rule number two, Compensation may be financially or in actions, which means we are not sure. required to do actions by it you. Is, it has been known that people have taken a buyout. Very rare, but it happens. Very good. It comes with a certain level of trust, however. We guard and, many uh, powerful secrets. We wouldn't want to go nitpicking our own rules, now would we, Edmund? <laughs> we just want some reassurance that simply walking through the door does not mean you will call on us and ask us to assassinate the king or anything of that nature. Oh, no. I would never do that. Perfect. Inside check. What's that? Sorry? <laughs> Inside check. Inside check. Okay, go ahead and roll. <laughs> yeah. Did you roll it? 14? 14. If you walk through the door, he's going to ask you to do something. You're going to have too much knowledge after you walk through the door for him to just let you guys go. He's going to want something. He'll probably call on you. Who knows what it'll be for, but it's going to be like a no questions asked type, type of thing. But you'll probably be rewarded or compensated for it. Who knows? Or maybe being left alone will be the com compensation. Edmund, why don't you go get LB? We'll have a chat here, and then we'll make a decision from there. No, oh, she owes nothing to me. She's not under my control. No, no, I, I simply ask, mean but... if you would pass on the message for us. Right, so would you like your compatriot returned to you so that you can bugger off? In the meantime, yes, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> then the secrets will remain behind the door. Please, never come here again. We're just... We would just like to speak to LB before we decide to enter or not. Wait, I just have another quick question from the back row here. Um, mm. Why would you let us in there anyway? Because we got past some booby traps and it means mind you're tricks very... your lizard and... It's set up as a means of gauging one's aptitude and usefulness to the Black Market Society. You've made it this far. So you're useful to me. Jen's not here. <laughs> like the hand in the back. <laughs> has has anyone unlocked that door yet? Uh, yeah, I'd say by this time. Um, well, let's see here. I'm just thinking, because that would be... <laughs> no. <laughs> he tried and tried, and he couldn't get it. So you can apparate out if you'd like. <laughs> um, so I've keep okay. into Lindell and be like, just so you know, I feel like he's saying we can either have Jen and leave, but if you want to speak to LB, we have to go inside. 
which will I then think around. I think very smart. Around. I like the quiet one. <laughs> Fish, was it? Sure. <laughs> Tell me, Edmund, your black market society, what sort of services do you provide anyway? Basically, we're smugglers for people, for goods. We keep secrets. We have roots. Oh. And Listen, we just we came here. I... Oh. Go ahead. Should Zach. we enter? Sorry. Should you what? enter? What a question. Might you expect of us? Tell us some examples. Just so we know I what we're to might be going I might ask you to take a package from point A to point B. I might ask you to go to talk to someone. I might ask you to kill someone. Hmm. But that last one doesn't happen very often, and I only use my best operatives for uh, those sorts hmm. of deeds. That was shady. <laughs> I've already got a demon that makes me kill people for him. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm cool out here. Lindell, you can go in and talk to LB. You can yeah, owe Mary, people she, things. He said that no, all or nothing. No, all or nothing. Do you? <sighs> we all go in to speak to LB or we get Jen? I'm not Would you allowed. like some time to think about it and discuss it amongst yourselves? If you have any more questions for me, ask now. Otherwise, I'm going to head in. Sure, let's discuss. All right, take your time. Um, My watchdogs are called off. Can you send out Jen in the meantime, if you don't mind? Decision first. I'll be listening. See, she is a prisoner. Not even, guy, not even with not my eagle splendor. He's all double speak. <laughs> she's not necessarily... Uh, she's more collateral at this point. I don't have any use for her. Collateral for what? For I'm your decision. Just, uh, I'm just here because you shot know. my bird. And I was looking for a syntax. Oh, no, do, you, do you not know how these people Oh, I apologize. <laughs> was, was that clearly. a spell? Was that a real creature? Oh, I'm speaking oh, clearly, Sofkeen. He's not speaking clearly. I'm speaking clearly. Do you so, need any goods or people clearly. smuggled, Sofkeen? <laughs> you're we you're a wizard. Then we're free and we leave, or we go in to speak to LB. But if we go in, we owe them something. But we just asked for Jen, and this motherfucker, he said we um, couldn't have skull. her. Skull. Excuse me, Skull. <laughs> how, how much did your familiar cost you? I do apologize. We do tend to shoot down any um, prying eyes in the vicinity. Well, I need Very some light. nice incense. I need some paper. How much incense? Mm -hmm. How much paper? I don't know, because I haven't looked at my D&D Beyond in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of summoning summon Krampus back. You should know the cost of summoning Krampus back. <laughs> summon her back like every other session. Poor crap. She dies all the time. Krampus. Just how are you to know? Level? You will never be over it though. Um, <laughs> then let's just say a hundred golds worth of each charcoal, incense, and herbs. It's Charcoal, a very expensive familiar. Incense and herbs. A hundred gold of each. Uh, done. He snaps his fingers. It'll be waiting for you at the Colchester estate. I do apologize. Thank you. I well, appreciate a sincere apology. Now then, please discuss amongst yourselves unless there's anything else. What will it be, Lindstrel? Lin Lindstrel? Lin yeah, Lindstrel. We'll let you I'll make the decision for us. He <laughs> opens the door again <laughs> and steps inside and closes it behind himself. <laughs> You're now alone. I don't it's need to speak to anybody. I don't really I care don't about know. It's, I it's, care it's, about. it's a weird thing. I feel like it's our group decision because now, thanks to somebody, they know where we live. Um, they were always going to know where we live. I don't, like, black markets, I don't need to smuggle any people. I don't need to smuggle any things. I've got a free house. I don't care about the government. know, they have the hookah. Right? What, what if the hookah is inside the black market society? If you're okay with the possibility of us owing them stuff, we can go inside. I can't owe anyone anything. If I... 
if they come to us and say, hey, we want you to kill this minor governor, and then Ordog didn't want that minor co governor killed, then I owe Ordog. Do you guys not understand that? I can't no, owe no, anyone anything fair. ever. <laughs> I think our only outgoing is that he said you can compensate financially rather than doing an action. So my real understanding... Quick, real quick, Genevieve, um, were you going to try and use a spell to get out of the... The yeah. prison. What were you going to use? She was going to walk over really disappointed and just shake her head and put her hand <laughs> on Xavier's shoulder. His and cast. Like, branches are all kind of whittled away. And oh, oh, I, I tried, but I, I couldn't oh. do it. She's like, I got you, buddy. I, I hope you roll with the band after me. And she's going to cast Thunderstep at level. What is it? I forget what level I have to be at to see if I can take somebody with me. That's what I'm reading right now. Well, this will be a decision because we're going to feel it. <laughs> okay, Thunderstep. Yeah, yeah. I can bring objects along as long as their weight doesn't exceed what I can carry. I can also teleport one willing creature of my size who is carrying gear up to its carrying capacity. Yeah, that's fine. Being, so what level? Um, I guess it just has to be level three then. Okay, right? so you're going to cast Thunderstep at level three and take Xavier with you? Yep. Okay, and you, what's the distance? Like 60 feet or? Oh, it is, but I'm just going the other side, like just on the other side of the gate. Just on the I other guess. side of the door. To be fair, it's probably going to blow it away anyway. Right. Yeah. So you're going to use your bells? Yep. Okay, so you like take that. take a couple bells out of your holster and ding -ding, do the gentle chimes to cast the spell. The arcane energy begins to swirl and then dissipates. What the fuck? It oh. seems that magic is not working in here. Um, hold on a second, that. And she starts rummaging around in her uh. bag. Xavier reaches down to the ground and picks up this powder that's all over the ground, like sand, and sprinkles it and looks at it through his hands. Oh. I think this is powdered residuum. That seems bad. It blocks magic. Well, then let me try what you were doing. And she's going to grab her Tinker's tools and try the lock herself. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a lock picking check with your lock picking tools. Okay, so I what think is... that's dexterity. Um, are you proficient with uh, Thieves' tools? No, I am. I've got Tinker's tools, so, so they're not roll... really. A roll a d20 uh, with disadvantage and add your dexterity bonus. Dexterity. Dex bonus. That's the number above dexterity, right? Yes, that's correct. So two d20s take the lower. Oh, they're both okay. So my lower one was 15 plus one, so 16? 16. Uh, you try and you, you actually break your lockpick inside. Um, it this does not hard. hurt. It seems like this is a very difficult lock to pick, and it's very heavily guarded and warded against magic. She's going to pout now, and looks like Xavier is too. Aww. Yeah, Xavier sits <laughs> down on the ground, and he tries to collect kind of a pile of it, enough to be a sample of this powdered residuum, and <laughs> sprinkles it into a vial. Um, I am going to give him one sample of uh, powdered residuum. Um, okay, so meantime... Jump when back. I, yeah, is Lindell, Lindell, Lindstrell, Lindstrell, Lindell. All right. You was just like so tired at this point. We've been up all night. <laughs> we've been, mm -hmm. It's actually about maybe 10 in the morning. Right, and we've been up since- We didn't wake up until like 8 or 9 p.m., so. Lindell, seriously, I just want to ask, what do you Oh. Well, you know, Cat Colchester, and like, what What do you feel? Why do you need to solve this mystery? I don't know why. It's pretty weird. I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's just, I, I want to know what's going on or what's happening. I want to find things that are lost and, and no, sure. we've only known each other for about a week. What? <laughs> what? what? Do you are you okay owing the society a 
a favor? Um, yes and no. Favors are interesting things. I'm always happy to help whenever someone asks. And he did say that there's an option that if they make it a request, um, you can buy them out of the request. So you can financially avoid doing the request if it's ever something that you don't think it's something you want to do. I no, you don't like really know how money works. Like million gold. <laughs> Probably not more yeah. than like a platinum or something. Oh my god! No, 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 what I, if I think it, it, it will cost you a lot of money. And money Sofkeen, you, even you don't so have. Smugglers work over all the islands. Sofkeen, are you okay owing them a favor? I mean, not. I don't. I'd rather just get Jen and leave. I don't really care about. I'll be. I mean, maybe Sofkeen. the hook is in there, but... You've traveled quite a bit. Roll a history check for me. Yeah, like, I feel like we would know what smugglers are, right? Us with... She was a pirate in the Outer Islands, so maybe she had some run-ins? Maybe. I got a 14. 14. You've heard of them, but it's all rumors. Um, nothing ever substantiated, but you know that there, there are smugglers that work with certain groups of pirates. Um, you've also heard that there's a secret island somewhere that uh, the Black Market Society and some of the higher level or more renowned pirates hide out and uh, get up to who knows what. Here's my other thought is that I just want to, I want to help Jen. And it seems like this whole teach and Othmal thing seems to be connected. And she wants to find Othmal. And what if he's trapped on an island that only the Belak Market Society can get us to. And I guess the other thing that I'm thinking about is what, what happens when short expectation is done? I mean, what happens when when we go back to our lives before we met and then I'm by myself again and down in Sub one all by myself and then, well, at least if I'm part of the Black Market Society, then I can, I can get things or sell things a lot easier and I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. We're not over and like uncharacteristically just give her like a little quick hug. Oh, yeah, you can always, you know. <laughs> I mean, you already have a mansion. So much has changed in a week, two weeks. Yeah, I still don't fully grasp what that means. Um. I still feel like that's a bit of a dream. I don't know. I mean, I couldn't. I don't know if I could really live up here for the rest of my li life. Like, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Like, it's just. I'm. I mean, you, I just, you really don't want to be here. You can leave. I'm sure he will only ask the people who actually want to go in to go in. He said it's all or none, right? But if you literally if you leave this place. Yeah. yeah, of course. You what if what if you like walk up and out of the sunken city, and then you don't see anything that's across the threshold? I I, I would imagine that would be fine. Just go sit in the centaur forest with your centaur bones. Do you want some centaur bones? I haven't found any yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You go centaur bone hunting. No, but I don't like. Like, how old are like you? it just seems like like this this black market society could help us get to a lot of answers. Helping Jen find Othmel, helping us figure out what's happening with between your date and Teach, and she gestures to you when she says your date, um, oh. <laughs> and, and Keep Teach forgetting about that. and and Pernopticon and all that. It just seems like they would have a lot of the answers, and um, I don't know. Plus, it's kind of nice to be part of a group, you know. Like, well, it's definitely taking a side. Well, uh, and so here's the thing, we it sounds like they say balance over order. And he mm -hmm. said that we're part of the balance and the government is part of the order. I have no intention of ever being a government official. I oh, never I want to be on that side of the things. So I'm very comfortably on the other side of the track. I think we're all very comfortably on the other side of the track. Just I don't know. out there. I yeah, have, I don't. That's, I'm totally okay. I have seen you guys kill people. I will not report it to the authorities. <laughs> like, I am, I am fully comfortable, you know, over here. 
just, but that's just me, and I, I don't want you to do anything that wouldn't make you uncomfortable. You, I'm, I'm sorry if, if I put you in that. I'm sorry. That was. Oh, no, I don't care about the government. I say burn it down. I just don't want them us to owe anyone anything that's going to put us in a position later. Because I know, oh. running between the islands, that the smugglers. This is not something you can just leave Liberty and be outside of their reach. You can't outrun them if you. Maybe open. that's a good thing, right? Maybe because if if maybe this conspiracy or whatever we're hearing all these little snippets about that I haven't quite put all together, maybe it's something much more far-reaching than just Liberty. Maybe it goes all the way back to to Alberg or Dominion. Probably. Don't want to owe anybody on Alberg anything either. I, well, and the other thing is, and this is just my thoughts. What if? We rob a bank after we're done here, and then we have all the money we could need to pay them off. What? <laughs> Why not? Why did your thought process <laughs> jump to, <that? laughs> to robbing a <laughs> bank? Lindell, you remember, there is a place in Scale Square called the Lock Tower. Um, I think that is a really giant you know, imperial you know, vault. I've been, I've been dreaming about doing a bank heisty with you guys because I think we would do really well and we could just steal all the money and then we'd be totally comfortable. It'd be fine. No. <laughs> Safi and I bonded very early on in that we don't care about money. <laughs> <laughs> you care about your reputation, right? Yeah. Your credibility. My credibility as the best damn necromancer, the whole spiral. Well, and to be a thought on that, if if you were known to be a, if the Black Society, whatever they're called, knew you that you were an exorcist and a necromancer, perhaps they might help you get some work and help you, like, I don't know, spread word of your actions or something like that. Yeah. I am flush with work. I have more work than we can handle. We have so many jobs. I've got so much work, I have anxiety. But Genevieve. here's the one thing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead and do your one thing, and then I'm going to jump to Genevieve. Based on all the reputations that all of us that live in Liberty and the Spiral and everything know, would we believe that these people could bust somebody out of the Panopticon? Probably. Because that is literally the only use I could see for them. <laughs> it was up until yesterday that I had even heard of the Panopticon, so I, I have no idea. I thought we all knew the Panopticon. I, mean, I doubt right? they're on. They probably trade in secret, you know. We've only um, known her for like five days, but I really like Jen, so I think we should help her. <laughs> yeah, I really want to help Jen and like I'm okay if 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 we help get Jen her, the love of her life back and then I have to do something a little shady but it helped her I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with that I don't mind you know I'll, I'll if that gets her her love of her life back then I'll do it I don't Fine. know anyone anything so I don't mind but you if you're really not comfortable with it you can just go oh, and wait for it I just don't want my soul eaten by a demon. So yeah. it's kind of a small thing in, you know, the big wide world. So sure. Let's go owe them a terrible favor. <laughs> Genevieve, you hear footsteps in the cavern um, coming toward your cell and you can see a little bit of faint torchlight. Um, they're heavy, heavy, like buckled boot falls in uh, the rock floor um, as it, comes towards you. Um, you can see uh, kind of a, the outline of a, a humanoid uh, female um, walking towards you. She has long red hair, um, a big pirate's cap on, um, and like mm -hmm. these, these kind of big flowing kind of uh, clothing. Um, you can finally see her face, which is very fair and um, somewhat uh, reminiscent, I guess you'd say, of the inhabitants of Liberty. Um, whereas you've noticed that like Aubergian and uh, Dominion people kind of have a different look to them. Um, so maybe she grew up here. Um, she makes her way up and um, holds her torch up and looks into your cell. Genevieve. Hi, I'm Lilith. And this little one 
This little one, I I, I feel there's something special with you. He's quite uh, I'm, special. I'm LB from the letter. I didn't mean for you to get it. But I have bad news. What's wrong? The assassin I mentioned in my letter. I assume you read it. They're here. They've killed. Does the name Billy Campbell mean anything to you? I think it might. Those digging your notes. You can see as she holds her torch up, there are glints of like metal and straps. She looks like she has devices on her. Um, some of them look like home homemade, maybe of her own design. Billy Campbell. I don't remember ever hearing that name. But if you're the roll a, from roll the a letter, history check for me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. We do know Campbell's. We've something has come up about Campbell's before. Besides the soup. Mm -hmm. I got a table. Soup to England? I never do that in book because, wait. Like, so What'd you get? Eight? Is, is that the die roll or is that with the bonus? Yeah, that's with the bonus. That's with badly. the bonus. It seems familiar, but you just can't place it. But, but hold on. So you're... Wait, you're the one who trades in, in goods, right? You're, I, I have heard of you. Do, do you know why I had... I was just recently arrested and I had these plans for an airship on me? Does that mean anything to you? Those are mine. Oh. <laughs> this bitch. Do you know how they were planted on me? Does the name Othmal mean anything to you? Sorry, I just dropped my watermelon. Um, <laughs> he's the James reason Robert. I'm alive. He's the reason I'm alive in a lot of ways, too. He's he's trapped Those somewhere plans, right now. You were the only way to get them off of Forge Fall and safely to this island. I did not intend for you to get caught up in this, but it was the only but way. But where is he? What happened to him? Why didn't he come back? He sacrificed himself for me to get me off of Forge Fall. It was a favor from Edmund. You see, Othmal, I guess in a former life, used to be part of this black market society. That's it not surprising. His freedom. So After he buying his freedom, he got out of the life, but Edmund needed a favor. The favor was Who? me. Who is Edmund? Plans. Edmund is the, I guess, the proprietor of this black market society, and the only way to smuggle me off island and get me safely onto Liberty. Did There's an assassin after me, as we've discussed. They've killed someone. I was hoping you would know that who this Billy Campbell was, and I, I fear that Othmal's you... been taken to Panopticon. I'm, I know he has. I tried to communicate with him, and it was distorted. He contacted but... you? How? I contacted him. I'm through sending spells, of course. How else? A sending spell? A spell or, or a stone? A spell. Channeled from my own energy, of course. Oh. Wow. He was able to penetrate the fortress. They must have figured out how to clear a channel. If I could get to him. Anyway, That's I'm sorry you've been imprisoned, but it's not really my decision to let you out. I'm doing all I can. Sit tight. If you, if, if you need a bodyguard, though, I mean, Xavier and I are capable wizards oh, I know. in our own. I know. I'll be back for you, promise. I, I'll get you out of here one way or another, but I figure that Edmund's going to make your group make a decision. I hope they choose wisely. Thanks, Lilith. Please, please come back and talk to me. We need to yeah. figure out a way to I'll get, get I'll get you out. We'll we'll get Othmal. I'll do anything I can to help. But we need to retrieve those plans. Okay. That makes sense to me. Sit tight. I'll be back. Oh, and don't waste any of your magic. There's 
this stuff on the ground that keeps spells from working. We were a little late, but yeah, we figured that out. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> right then. I'll be along shortly. Um, try to pinch your nose. I know it smells pretty awful in here. I think something died next door. You might want to deal with that before you have someone else in here. Yeah, it smells pretty <laughs> bad. I don't have keys to the cell, however. You see, I'm kind of uh, owning to Edmund now, too. So <laughs> we'll try and get our way out of this. I'll be back. And she turns and leaves. See how, see how smart I am? You doesn't want to owe people shit. <laughs> okay, back to uh, back to you guys. What are you deciding to do? Are you entering? I think it would probably be good. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think it would be a good idea if maybe not everyone in the Colchester estate owed Edmund or owed the Black Market site. It would be good to have someone, at least one person, if not more than one of us, who who isn't indebted to them and can act more impartially. Would that make sense? Well, and plus, okay. then they can't just come, you know, literally make our house our debt and take our house from us, and then we're all homeless again. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not new, so. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, um, so, I, I don't know. I'm, I I think it's worth the risk to get Jen back and and figure out what's going on with Othmal and the connection that I'm I'm willing to to put myself at risk. But, I mean, you, if you want to leave, or so, same thing as Havkeen, I think that's totally fair. Um, I don't really care either way. Nice, nice way to live your life, Saf. Saf <laughs> <laughs> right here on the shoulder. <laughs> Go with the group. <laughs> like, my only thought is, like, Safkin, you're a pirate, right? Um, or you used to be. So there could be some benefit to joining a group of smugglers and, and secreticians. Fish usually go with the flow. <laughs> Follow the ties up. Perhaps next time you're on a ship, they might ask you to do something disastrous. Who knows? I mean... If it, if we can find more information about Othmal to help Sorry Jen, that, then I'm happy to do that. I just, I don't, I'm not that bothered about this whole Colchester LB and stuff. I don't really understand any of that stuff, to be honest. So, good point. They just kidnapped you. If you feel like you want backup going in there, then I'll go with you. I think it might be wise for you to maybe not be involved and you can stay out and be the impartial one. Or I can go with you if you just want to go in by yourself and die. I don't need to eat from the tree of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> you is fine. <laughs> you know, which is funny because I thought of you as like a wizard, and usually wizards are like, hey, give me all that knowledge, but you're not like that. No, oh, I'm She's just rock full of knowledge. Yeah, I've got all my yeah. dark yeah. knowledge. Right? Like, if Charles was here, it would probably drive him crazy, like, not knowing. I. He's not Charles, so. Stop trying to manipulate her. I literally have so much I need to know already, and I was a terrible student from day one. <laughs> so. um, well, Seda, the what? wasp just flew in front of my face. I know. Is it, it's been... is it on me? No, it's not on you. It's still flying over in the corner. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> we, we have a wasp. Have here. Yeah. yeah. There's a wasp up here. It happens. Okay, carry on. Um, I mean, if it's not all or nothing, if I can leave, then I just want to open the door to the outside. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and the trip wire is there, right? Can I yeah. disengage that trip wire? Uh, Don't you can try, me. yeah. Uh, you'll be doing a disarm uh, thingy. Uh, how do you do that? I can't remember. Use tools check. Uh, yeah, do you have to use tools? 
I think I do, right? Because yeah, I got you've been the practicing with CC. So CC, she taught me so much. Um, I'm proficient in tinkering, or I mean, thieves tooling. Because okay, CC. then yeah, it's a thieves tools check to disarm the trap. Okay, and so if I'm proficient, it just means I don't roll with disadvantage, right? I don't roll with advantage. You. Yes, yeah, it's a straight roll. Straight roll. Yeah, and and you straight get roll. to add your proficiency bonus. Whereas yes. if you weren't proficient, you, you wouldn't because add proficient. your proficiency bonus. Yep, that's correct. Plus four. Oh well, then that's a that's a dirty twenty. Sixteen. Dirty on the twenty. Yeah, no problem. Um, you managed to slip a pin out of a an explosive device of some sort, um, and loosen the rope that is uh, across the door. And it, I, it I want to have. Yeah, I'll just slip slip down. Just pop that out of there. Yep, no problem. I mean, <laughs> I really miss Cece. Do you think she's in on all this? You tell me, Council, wasn't she? And like, I would really like to hear her thoughts about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, we make a good team. I mean, if you're telepathic, I guess you could hear her thoughts. <laughs> I'm just gonna think about the uh, spell for shield all over myself. Just. And step outside the door. Does anything happen if I just step out, look around? You step outside the door. Um, you're maybe about... Uh, you're about 60 feet above sea level. Um, it looks like there's a rickety kind of sunken stairwell that is really steep, like a 45 degree angle straight down with some stairs that are kind of uh, rotted off and stuff that leads straight into the water. And you can see rooftops and you know debris and parts of houses just floating in the shore as it, the waves kind of just crash up on the, the lower parts of the, uh, of the dock. Uh, stick! And then the other one. No, no, no. Phantom. And Linda will poke her head up. Fairview. Fathom, can you give us a hand, please? Fathom? Anybody out here? Roll a perception check. Hmm. It, with advantage, because uh, Lindell's helping. For me? Yeah. 17. You don't see or hear them anywhere. Okay. okay, don't kill me. I'm going home. I don't care about your <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> I don't, I don't shop. shop. <laughs> 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 don't need a don't need a white market. Don't need a black market. Out of here. You can hear the uh, the strong wind from uh, I guess which side of the shore you're on. You're this right. From the yes. north, the north wind kind of ripping around the cliff face. I'm just gonna head up there. I'm gonna get out of town. Look for some centaur bones. <laughs> so you're heading up. Um, if they're gonna get Genevieve. He says we don't owe them anything to get Genevieve back, right? Hmm. That's what he said. He said you could leave. And but, never return. But did he say all or none? Yes. And so, does me leaving mean anything? It might. Let's just knock on the door and ask him. Let's give the door a little tap. <laughs> How many times are you going to knock? Ooh, will the knocks mean different things? Do a shave and a haircut, two bits. What does that mean? A shave and a haircut. Shave. Two bits. You roll a perception check with disadvantage for me as you approach the door. Approach. Do I know anything oh. about different amounts of knocks? Like, is it. Is weird it a code? piratey thing? Um. Nine. Okay. Yeah. You walk towards the door. You reach for the handle. Your hand goes through the handle. It's an illusion! <laughs> Can I just spell magic on it? Uh, uh, yeah. You're part of the society. At what level? Dispel magic? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't have any fourth levels left spell slots. Oh, no. I have fourth level. I don't have any fifth level. Um, fourth level dispel. I don't know if I should waste a dispel on dis disillusion. Yes, maybe not. Yes, uh, Edmund, Edmund, we have a question. It's not even a door. They can't even afford a door here. <laughs> you call out to Edmund, but there's no response. Hi, Edmund. We have a question. I guess he just wants us to follow or not follow. 
You get the Nothing feeling that when he asked the last time if you had any further questions, that was the last chance. Hmm. Now it's just make a decision. Uh, but yes, you, the, why don't you the door just... is illusory. Is there literally a spell besides like me holding a force wall that if we pass through the door, we physically can't pass out of the door? Me as a wizard, do I know of a spell like that? Or if you pass through the door, you can't pass back out of the door? Right, he said, he said if we enter, we can never leave. Oh, uh, roll an arcana check for me. Yeah, that's what I just want to know. Yeah. Like, do I know? God. I am the worst wizard. Um, Maybe you should go and do some training with uh, the people that uh, trained your master. Uh, uh, so go, if you see him, say hi. I'm supposed to go chill with the pharaohs, um, but I just won't do it. Uh, ten. <laughs> Ten. Nah, you have never heard of anything like that. You have no idea. I'll I've disarmed that trap so we can always run away. I'll tell you what. You, why don't you wait outside? I have one last dimension door. If if I really need to get Safkeen and I out, we'll go in. We'll we'll have a chat. We'll get Jen. And if we're not back outside in fifteen minutes, um. Oh, I don't know. Ten minutes? I I don't know what what what's an, an adequate amount of to come storming in and save us and or to meet us upstairs in the sunken city. What do you think? I'm just going with you. I, no, you but I don't want you to own anyone. You well, it's not going to matter. What is what power does this freaking man have over Ordog? Zilch. Okay, unless he's the commander of Otherweir. <laughs> you just yeah, up. What? If you go in and you don't accept their conditions, like they could kill you. Have you thought yeah, of that? And then I'll just be on the, be other, on the other side. side. I will haunt the shit out of you, Safkeen. We, we can be best friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ghost my best friend. Thank you very much. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, before we go down there, Safkin, you should know I've got this ring on, and if I do die, my spirit will be in this ring, and then you can wear it, and we can talk to each other for all of eternity. <laughs> Why would I? Did I not tell you that before? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe? That's pretty cool, and it's good to know that your stole sticks around because then I can do some some magic what not to bring you back. Oh, see? It's frozen on the computer. It looks like she's already stuck in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to share that with you. It's amazing. Fine. A necromancer never dies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fear death. I fear servitude. We've got issues. Yeah, Trust issues. Well, you know my misgivings. Let's just go down this long hallway to our, you know, slavery. Who's messaging me? Hey, well, why don't you wait? <laughs> why don't you wait outside, and we'll just call for you if we need help or something. We don't know. Okay, but I don't, think I don't think they're gonna let us through. It's all or nothing. But I can chill up here while you guys walk through. Chill outside the the building. Right outside, maybe, right outside like the illusory door. Up. I mean, I'll just stand here. Lindell, walk, walk through. See if you can come outside. back out. Yeah. No. Okay. So, are you guys going through the illusory door? And will, with much, much chagrin, will, yeah, go through the door. Okay, so Lindell and then Safkeen, are you following behind? Safkeen will, like, glance back at you and then glance through the door. Yeah, you give like, you one last, right one last glance before following Lindell. Lindell, you walk... Up to the door, are you going to try and open it or just walk through the illusion? Well, I feel like go to knock on the door. Okay, yeah, you go to knock to the, on the door and your hand kind of passes through it, but that hits something wooden on the other side. It's about like maybe two feet in and it hits something wooden that makes a knock. And I guess she'll, she'll, she'll do shave and a haircut. What is shaving a haircut? I have no idea what that is. Okay. Oh, that's but, cool. but what you're supposed to do is you just do the and then someone else is supposed to do the Yeah. So seven knocks. Wait. 
Dun, 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 dun. Just five. Five knocks. Yeah, five knocks. Five knocks. I didn't know that was cool. I thought it was just yeah. like... There's no response. Knocking on door tune. <laughs> you do your five okay. knocks and there's no response. Oh, is the, can she feel a, ha a handle? You start to put your hands through and you feel on this like uh, this wooden panel and you make your ways to the edge and on the edges there's a stone wall like it's been carved in a couple of feet and you can feel the top. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you're not tall enough. You can't feel the top. You can feel the sides though. And then the and just wooden, a wooden panel? panel? In the, yeah, in front of you. She'll try knocking three times. One, two, no. three, you knock. Okay. And you hear a... And then the wooden panel pushes back a little bit out of your reach. Well, um, I guess... So you're, gonna, so you're just going to stay here and listen for us for cries for help, or...? or... No, I'm going to go... No, in with them. Saf Keen, roll okay. a perception check for me. Perception. Ooh, 16. 16. You notice when you hear that sound as Lindell does the five and then the three knocks, there's a wooden panel on the wall, maybe about four feet to the left of this illusory this door. Kitty kitty. And you can see it's popped out about an inch from the wall. Mm. It's the size of what? a doorway. Mandel. I would like jerk my head towards the thing that's just popped out the door. <laughs> the wall. Wall door. It looks wall like there's wall. a secret door about four feet to the left of this illusory door. Edmund came out of this door. Should we go in that? Maybe this is another trap. I don't know. You you go and you open up the other door. You pull it. it. It takes a little bit of strength to pull it open. And there's this cold wind that rushes in. Um, and you peer in. It's very dark inside. But it looks like there's a small hallway that leads forward. Carved out of the rock. Um, I'll light my my cup up. Light yeah, you cup. light your you light your cup and walk in. There's like maybe about a five foot wide, ten foot tall uh, kind of cavern that's been carved out of the rock, and it goes straight back, um, maybe about twenty feet. And there is another like wrought iron door in the rock, um, about twenty feet away. And about ten feet in, halfway on the right side, there's another big iron door that's inset into the rock. And the uh, iron doors kind of glint off the firelight. Lindell, want to lead the way? Lindell, uh, as you're feeling the sides inside this illusory door, you feel something at the bottom of the doorway, kind of like knee height to you. Very carefully. Yep. So like check for a trap. All right, go ahead and roll. Uh, let's see, one second. Trapped this is it. going to be... Uh, uh, traps, 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 traps. Um, this is going to be per... Right, investigation. Investigation check for me. Here we go, guys. Seventeen? Seventeen. Um, you do feel that there is something there about knee height, but you can't really tell what it is. Can I, like, poke my head through the illusion and look down at it? Yes, you may. And when you look down through the illusion, you can see there is a very thin strand of some kind of metal wire going Ooh. from one side of the rock wall to the other about knee height to you. And then there's this just wooden panel on the inside, just enough that you can walk inside and trip the wire. But there's no like hallway beyond. No. Uh, I think this is this is a, another trappy boo. Um, I think we're supposed to head down the other hallway. But 
It looks like there's still traps once you enter. I don't get how Edmund went past here. So, I mean, be careful as we keep going. Magic user? Magic user? You, you think he misty stepped? Door. Dimension doored. Well, but I saw him open the door, right? We saw him, so I'm not sure. Did any of us touch him? Maybe he was an illusion. God, maybe Evan doesn't exist. I'm going to check for traps down the hallway. Okay, yeah, I mean, you check for traps. Go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. Safkeen? He probably knows where that trap is. Maybe he just walked over it. But beyond is just another wooden panel. Right. Lindell, you do remember seeing a door open, just slightly, and somebody stepping out of a crack in the doorway. Huh. Yes, and it, it sure. did the exact same thing in reverse when he left. Maybe I can knock the right amount of times or something. You do remember, you knocked five and then three, and the panel moved back, and then it triggered that secret door to open. And he didn't, he didn't knock to open the door. You did not hear any knocking before he entered. Just the kind of uh, click, uh, almost of a, of a latch opening. And there's no way that I can tell to like reset the door to try to just open it without knocking. Roll an intelligence check for me. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do complex math. Go. <laughs> so my modifier is plus zero, mm -hmm. but I rolled a 19. Hey, nice. Hey. You, you figure if you close the secret door back until it's flush, maybe the wood panel would slide back and, you know, lock again? What do you think? We could try it. You, how'd you do in your investigation check? 18. 18. No, you don't see any traps as you enter into the, like, cavern hall. Um, just two right iron doors with big handles on them. No light coming in. What is, what is a wrought iron door? Like a gate? Uh, wrought, wrought iron would be like very um, like pockmarked, rough, almost like hastily poured or not much care was taken. Or maybe it's really old. So the whole, so the whole door is iron? Like a, yes. Like a cell door? Uh, it's solid. It's It's more like a it reminds you of the safe room at the Colchester Mansion. Hmm. Um, I Not as well constructed, though. Saf, uh, you before you go through there, can you just close that door for a quick minute? Okay, I'll step back and close it. Mm -hmm. You step back. Well, wait, what if I can't open it again? Uh, we know oh, five, knocks, five knocks plus three does open it, so we can always do that again. Yep, you close okay. it, and, and the panel moves back into place. Lindell, without knocking, we'll just try to open the door. Just, like, reach for the handle. The illusory door? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you reach for the handle, your hand passes right through it. Yeah, no, I, I got nothing. Well, knock once. You knock. Nothing. Maybe just go through. You know any other fancy knocks? <laughs> how, many times, how many times, times Lucky? You just do like one. And then if I'm in two. And then on the other one, two, three. And then yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Hello, me. Are you going yeah, to do that? She's hungry. No. Hungry. Need to go. Why what? are you Is inside? Weren't you locked outside? How do you should probably open the door. So are you going to knock more than once? Oh, I think Thomas froze. I think Thomas is frozen. Thomas. Oh, Thomas. No. Thomas. Now that you've closed it, that secret panel is almost indistinguishable from the wall. It's very hard to make out the seam. Oh. They're very sneaky folks. Thomas is still frozen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Thomas. Oh no, your PC he oh wow. Huh? His what computer just oh, crashed. No. 
This happened to me the one time. It took forever. Aww. Maybe. Okay. Uh, hang on just a moment. Let me see what's going on downstairs. What with poor? Oh, no. Poor Hermione is hungry. She said, feed me. I've been eating this whole time. I ate like half a block of cheese and I'm a third say, of a what watermelon. Did you put that cranberry stuff on. Oh, it was it was um like a smoky red pepper jelly that I picked up when I was in the countryside. Yeah. Thomas is back. Hi. Thomas is back. Welcome back. Okay, guys, sorry. He didn't say there was like a secret knock or something to get in. He just said, make your decision and come in. Yep. Maybe that was its own test. <laughs> if you can work out how to come in. <laughs> That's a pretty big test by the sound of it. So you're going to knock more than once. Oh. Safkeen's doing her number knock test, right? No, Safkeen's okay. not knocking the door. Safkeen, Safkeen didn't even suggest. Jennifer suggested knocking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not Safkeen. <laughs> what are you doing, guys? Uh, I guess Linda will just do the five and three again. Uh, after the one? One, so she'll do one and then... Uh, she'll do f one and then three. Okay. And then she'll do uh, two more. And then one more. Four and then two and then one. So that's seven. Mm-hmm. And she'll do one more. Panel moves back again. The wall opens. And same thing. It's just like moved back. It's not opened yeah, it's all just, the way. It's just moved back. Same as before. The wire across is still intact. Okay, well, I guess maybe we should go through this door. I'm not seeing... I, I'm not smart. I don't know any other way to go. Let's just go through here. Okay, you guys enter into the cavern hallway behind the hidden doorway. Um, as you do, you hear <laughs> of these metal bars being pulled aside and then <laughs> the big wrought iron door across from you opens up and through it steps Edmund. And he is joined by both Fathom and Styx. He greets you again and says, congratulations, I was hoping you'd find that. Uh, we have to be very cautious. You've passed both tests. Congratulations. Welcome to the Black Market Society. Please pull the door shut behind you, and you may enter into the inner sanctum. And he walks back through the doorway, um, opening it a little bit further into a large cavern. You can hear water flowing in the distance. Um, you guys close the door behind you and enter in and you are now you in with the us? inner sanctum of the black market society um is you coming with or does she stay behind no i'm coming okay yep You're coming. i've got my my cup light lit up like lighting oh up yeah my way. lindell will light up um kumo and put him on her head hmm. uh when you guys walk through the doorway into the main cavern area um sticks is inside the door, inside. leaning against the kind of door frame, just staring at you guys with an evil glare as you walk in. Mm. Nasty trick, that memory wipe. Mm. I hope you did not affect my companion for a long term. I have no idea what you're talking about. It will take time to correct. Mm. You know, Stix, you shouldn't kidding. walk around and make boundless accusations. That's rather rude to someone who just walked in your door. Well, I am glad my friend is okay. Welcome to the Black Market Society. I will be keeping my eye on you. Fine. Do you, do you all get a lot of reluctant members? 
Mm, you could say so, but we have been members of the Black Market Society for many years. I am Styx, my partner Fathom. We have been with Edmund now for, what is it, uh, Fathom, how many years? He looks over, scratching his head, still a little bit confused. I... Ten years? He says like a question. Uh, good, you did not affect that part of his memory. Yes, yeah, about a decade. Hmm. It's weird. They have the same voice, even though they're different species. But um, <laughs> Styx walks over to Fathom, taking his reptile face in his hands. I'm just glad you are okay, and gives him a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Aww, he's so cute! Aww. Oh my god! So once inside, you can see to the left, there is a stairwell that leads to kind of a raised up area um, with some seating. And there's more stairs that lead up to a cavern door, um, maybe about 20 or 30 feet up. In the center of the space, there's a large fire pit surrounded by these big boulders. And there's a fire blazing. Hanging above the fire is a large barred cage hanging by a huge, like, chain that attaches to the cavern ceiling, maybe about 100 feet up. Um, I think 100. Let me check how many feet before I tell you. Where is my map? Yeah, uh, 100 feet. No, 60 feet. 60 feet up. Um, yeah, about 60 feet up is the, the ceiling of this cavern. Um, there is... Across from that, a little drop-off, and there's a plank that walks up to a three-masted ship that is kind of docked um, at eye level. So the drop-off must be to water below, um, and there's a ship there ready to um, board, maybe in an emergency. On the other side of the ship, there's a waterfall that falls down. Um, crashing is the source of the, the flowing water sounds in this cavern. Um, there are various tables and chairs set up. Um, the area that Lindell you saw in your scry is off to the right. Um, there is a table and chairs um, on the south side of the fire pit. Um, and there's another wrought iron door next to that. Um, and then three tables before it gets to where you guys are standing. Um, off on the other side to the left, there's another wrought iron door that is open currently um, into another cavern area. Um, and there are several tables outside of it kind of set up in a, um, a U shape with all of these crates and, and barrels. And uh, there's like treasure chests and uh, different uh, who knows what contraband, maybe things they're transporting, things they're picking up, um, things they're delivering to people, kind of all sorted on those tables over there. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys are in this space. Edmund goes over um, to the table that you remember seeing in the scry that uh, LB or Lilith was sitting at, um, and he takes a seat, kind of crosses his legs and leans against it and looks at you all and uh, says, so you are all quite crafty individuals. All magic users? No. No. You're a fighter. Sure. I'd like to pit you against one of my own and see how skilled you are. I haven't been able to see yours yet. But I know that we have at least two magic users. The little one and the dark one. Skull, was it? I guess that is a no, code her, name. Out a little bit. <laughs> and what was it? Uh, Listel? That, that's. You're gonna find out our real names anyway. You probably already know them. I am Lou. I am Lou. You, Aubernell, master exorcist of Auburg. Exorcist. Here in hmm. Interesting. I have never come across anyone not with the Pharaohs that had those kinds of abilities. Wizard, studied. They wish they, they had, wish they had my abilities. Come on. <laughs> well, you are very welcome here at the Black Market Society. Myself, I am an illusionist, as you might have discovered from the doorway and uh, my visage that you had a conversation with earlier. Um, Fathom and Styx are both magic users as well, um, although Fathom not as versed in magic as Styx, one might say. Uh, 
Styx is more of the uh, spell sniper sort, whereas uh, Fathom is more of the weapon sniper sort. Uh, they patrol the area up above and make sure no one, none of the riffraff gets in without uh, some trouble, as you encountered. Myself, I am the proprietor of the Black Market Society. My name is Edmund. It is, I am pleased to make your acquaintance. I hope you will all be of use to some of us. Now then, I believe your compatriots are held in a cell. Uh, he reaches down and reaches into his pocket and pulls out a key. Right, I believe this is the key. And he tosses it at Lindell. You snatch the key. It says, uh, across the cavern, the big wrought iron door that's open. Uh, second cell on the right. You can go and free your friends. Lindell will... Uh... Yeah, she'll just she'll just totter off. She's just excited to see all the new things. So mm -hmm. she'll just like doo -doo 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 -doo. off she goes. Please, uh, fish and you, Aubernell, you said. Any relation to the Aubernells of uh, Auburg? Distantly. You have connections. She's gonna do just a three sixty, looking around. Where's this great knowledge we were supposed to be exposed to? Oh, the knowledge so waiting on for it to rain down on me. More of a collective knowledge sort of thing. You'll be privy to some information now that you have breached our inner sanctum, and we welcome you. So what is it you'd like to know? Maybe I can be of some service. Please join me. And he pulls out uh, a decanter of wine, and uh, he, he takes the lid off of a platter. Um, there's some bread and fruits. Um, there's a wheel of cheese. Um, he starts pouring wine in several goblets and passes them out to the different seats, um, ushers you over to join him for a drink and a meal. Is my cup still lit up in here? It is. Your cup is still lit. So magic works in here. This magic does. This magic does. Okay. Sure. While watching Lindell free your friends, I'll go sit down. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, you take a seat. He pours you a goblet of wine and passes it over. Please help yourself. You must be famished. We're actually supposed to be on a wine tour at the moment. <laughs> oh, uh, up above the uh, <laughs> We were going to start drinking real early today. Yes, the hot oh, did, you, did you meet that uh, the the creepy uh, brewmaster person makes all the wine, count something or other? Uh, we haven't actually been to the brewery yet. We were staying out. You know, we looked at some ceramics, saw some bees. Yeah, crafty individuals, um, the hops millers. Long family yeah. lineage. Yeah, we saw one of them dead. So, you know, seen one Hops Miller, seen them all. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, Mildred, the council member, recently deceased. How is Lindell doing with the doors? Yeah, Lindell, you make your way through um, easily enough. It's, it's pretty dark inside. Um, do you, you can't see in the dark, can you? I have, I have Kumo lit on my head. Okay, yeah, uh, you light up Kumo on your head. Um, Genevieve, you see a light enter into the cavern once more, and little footsteps of a tiny halfling girl. Hmm. Hello? Lilith? Hello? Jen? I, Jen, is that you? I think that's Lindell. Hi, Lindell. We're in here. <laughs> Jen, oh my god, you're okay! Oh my gosh, I was so worried about you! I'm so glad you're okay! My fingers <laughs> are gone. This is, this is the key to the that I was so worried about you! <laughs> yeah, you unlock the, the gate and pull it open. Um, you guys are free now. Thank you. Um, I think we need to get out of here. Um, there... Yeah, I'm come with me. There's a lot. There's a lot I have to tell you that happened in the last hour. Let me catch you up. We, we can't leave without talking to Lilith, though. She, she she's really important. I think to figuring Who's out. Who's Lilith? What... LB, Cat's friend. <gasps> oh my god! You talked to LB? Mm -hmm. 
She's beautiful. Oh, you're gonna love her. But we need yeah, to find I her just, first. I just she had a hat. I never got to see her face, but like she was all like mysterious and she had the arm tattoo. And it's, anyways. It's a good hat too. It's a really good hat. That's not the point. Oh my god. Okay, okay. Tell me everything that's happened in the cell while you were here while we walk back, and I'll tell you everything that's happened in the last hour while we walk. You catch each other up, no problem, <laughs> as you make your way back um, through the door. Um, when you come back into the central chamber, you can see uh, Lilith is actually on board the vessel, the three-masted ship that's parked there um, in the drop-off, and she walks down the plank um, to meet you guys at the table. She kicks her big booted leg over the uh, the stool and kind of straddles it irreverently, putting an arm on the table, pouring herself a goblet of wine and guzzling it down, and just kind of listens. <laughs> It feels like meeting like a celebrity that you've like seen on TV, but you've never actually like met in person. <laughs> she has a very fair complexion. Um, she has a, a little bit of freckle across the bridge of her nose. Um, long, flowing, beautiful red hair. Um, big old opulent pirate's uh, hat on with a feather in it, and these big like buckled big, like, clothing. Um, she looks like a proper pirate. Um, but you notice these glints of metal and straps underneath her clothing. It looks like she's got devices on her. I'm sorry, are we um, going to sit at this table? Everybody? Yeah, sit down, have some wine. Yes, please, yeah. join us. Uh, Remember how I said that like walking through the door means that we join the, the black market society, yada, yada, yada. Um, knowledge is pain. Remember, I told you about the rules and whatnot. And um, so, yeah. So you're a smuggler now. Wow. Well, we're all smugglers. I am well, Edmund. And... Pleased to meet you. He stands. He's wearing wearing this very nice, like pantaloons and a vest with like these striped iridescent colors. Um, he's not a very uh, handsome fellow kind of aged, bit of a comb over, weird spindly mustache, but uh, he's a charismatic guy. You're, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you've got, you got something like just right there. Cause I mean, you're looking great, but there's just like, there's a little bit of something. I want to wipe. Bit of, just bit of cheese of wine. Hmm. No, it's dark. It's like kind of dark and like you smudge. No, oh. Oh, you, you don't oh. like it. I'm trying to grow it in, but uh, have a bit of a hair <laughs> loss <laughs> problem. I'm so sorry. I thought that it was. Anyways, hi. Used to be a full I, beard. The whole the whole deal. I, I apologize for my brutish appearance. So, so tell me, Edmund, why this place is your headquarters of all places? Why the sunken city? Well, it's a uh, secret. Easy to keep people out. Hmm. Plus, you can see we have our own cove, our way in and out of the stream, our uh, own means of uh, getting contraband and uh, people under the radar, so to speak, of the uh, palace guard and the uh, imperial navy. I can, I can see you can tackle the seas, but do you have ways of getting around secretly on the island as well, between the layer levels? Well, if there's a teleportation circle, uh, we can send you there. Hmm. He kind of looks up above the fire in the center of the cavern to the cage that swings above it. Ours is protected, so to speak, from unwanted visitors, but you're more than welcome to use it if you know of another place with a teleportation circle. You were saying yes. you, you needed to get your plans back. Do we, do we remember who took them? Are they with the council? Those plans are everything. My life's work. Um, excuse me. Are you are you LB or Lilith or, or what do you, what do you prefer? Yes, to the note. I assume you read it. I am LB. My name is. Lilith. Yes, look, I've got it here. This is your signature. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> oh, you have it. Ah, <laughs> uh, wonderful. Uh, yes. So, just read it again. It'll bring you up to speed. Yeah. Um. You said something about um. Um, teach and teachians and um, stealing your your device or yeah, the like self-proclaimed emperor, seat of power, Spiralia city, the whole thing. Um, can you tell me a bit more about it? About him? 
Well, I mean, what's your relationship? He's a piece of shit that I want dead. Oh, oh dear. Does that spell it out um, clearly enough? <laughs> he apparently wants us dead, too. He tried to have us killed when we first arrived. Oh, well, we're there. in the same boat. We can bond over that. Lovely. No, he okay. has been stealing inventions, plans, devices from wizards, inventors alike throughout the islands to try and beef up his navy. I'm his most recent target, but I had evaded capture and evaded uh, having my work stolen until recently. Um, unfortunately, Genevieve, you were picked up when you entered into Liberty, and uh, now the plans are in the hands of the folks that uh, I don't want them in the hands of, so hopefully you can help me. Is get he aware that I'm, is he aware then of your society? Is that how he knew to target me? He who teach? Yes. <laughs> Edmund laughs. No, no. Edmund would string us up the first moment he had to catch us. No, we are not affiliated with the Royal Navy or the Spiralia Trading Company. The Countess let us operate, but uh, Samson Teach, I think you guys have been uh, in contact with him, probably at mm. your inquiry that you had recently. Uh, he is not privy to our arrangement with uh, the Libras. How do you know about our inquiry? Well, I know Mildred died. I figured they'd call an inquiry. How did you how, know about? How do you know Mildred? What's what's your relationship to Mildred? Well, you just told me, didn't you, Fish? Now then, sorry, Lin Listel, Lindell, what? What was your question? Lindell will look over at you and give you the biggest eye roll and she'll be like, you can just call me Lindell. Lindell, um, got it. Um, what, what is your... How, um, oh gosh, so many questions. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> um, first off, um, Lilith, was it? Um, are you trying to get a hold of Cat? Cat Colchester? Yes, Cat. Um, I'm hoping she can help me, but yeah, I've got a hold of her. We've been chatting you back did. and forth. We're kind of like pen pals. Um, she's on her way back to the island. She'll be back in a few weeks. Wonderful. Um, I need her help uh, with making these plans that you must have seen, um, making them come to life, so to speak. I need her expertise. She's an inventor Do you need as well. Help? Uh, yes, I am an inventor. Um, formerly and currently, uh, in between odd jobs and piracy. And Cat Colchester is also an inventor? We work together. Um, we were part of the Is It Guild, working for the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the miners here on Liberty, under that weird goblin fellow. I don't know if you've met him. He's a council member. We were tasked with uh, helping to create the dwarven lifts uh, that uh, are like massive elevators that bring product up from the du dwarven. Um, we helped build the stairwells from the uh, the Liberty Crossing in Harbor Town up to the upper levels. Uh, we create mining equipment, um, all sorts of things like that. Yeah. And what was the name of that Goblin Council member? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do we even meet a I, goblin? Yeah, I got it, I got it. His name was... The goblin one was... There's Lagos, Marinas, Gaius, Rap Caption, Lizette Ambrose, Samson Teach, Tristani No, Deep Sage Zagana, Savine, Chronoclasm, Prunus Hollyworth. He's not on here. Yeah, I think we met a goblin. I don't agree. Yeah, I don't remember. Magnus, yeah, it's a weird little squat goblin. He didn't really have much to say. Um, you guys did. Was that his Magnus? He, he introduced himself to you. Uh, let's see yeah. if I can find it. Going through my notes. I have lots of notes. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> oh, oh, I've one. got it on the computer. I'll just look it up. It's picture. Sorry, I keep having to go away. My dogs, we're out of dog food. 
Oh. Did they give them something else? Uh, they were council. barking at me. Oh. Where's my Liberty Council members? Uh, founders, guys. I, I love John Malkovich. Do you not? Have you ever watched anything with him in it? No, no. Liberty I just council. I had in the current times, and I'm like, I like him more now. Yeah, I, I, yeah I do too. I actually, I really like John Malkovich. He's from really close to where we live in Illinois. Oh, yeah, he's from Benton, Illinois. It's like, like a forty-minute drive from here. It's a little town, and then his sister still lives here. And I always thought, watching him in movies, I thought he was German or something. And then I found out he's literally from like my hometown. <laughs> Uh, we make him weird uh, his West. name is is Magnus Gaius Guildsprocket, the Minister of Industry. Uh, Magnus Gaius Guildsprocket. Is Magnus. Uh... Minister of is Industry and uh, Guild Leader on Liberty of the Is It Guild. Okay, okay. Do you know someone, uh, Lilith, do you know someone named Lafayette by chance? Yeah. Um, university? The Arcane University. Oh. He works there. Yeah, he, he, he worked with uh, Kat. It was about the time I left. Okay. Did you have any connection with him? I mean, he's kind of the reason I left. What do you mean? <laughs> Him and Kat were doing some extra planar investigation that I did not want to be a part of. I see. Well, I, mean, he's dead. I mean, he's dead now, too, so you don't really have to worry. Oh, well, kind of a shame. He was useful. Hmm. He got to have a very long, long extra planar life. Hmm. <laughs> well, good for him. Anyway, why did you want to know about uh, Lafayette? Well, I'm just wondering. We're thinking because... of fusing the top part of his body to a centaur. Wait, no, you are not. A <laughs> Is she joking? Not us. Not a centaur. No, not with. have any centaur bones. <laughs> the warrior. That whole Look, Lindell, I'm world. shopping. Uh, Edmund kind of looks over and he's like, "Are you talking about that whole centaur forest thing?" Well, yes. centaur. Forest. I was just hoping about. Yeah. Anything that remains in those woods is no longer a centaur. I'll just put it that way. Mm. Well, if they can be dead. Do you think you know where some old centaur bones are? You know, For trade. Perhaps I could come across something. I have some contacts. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you doing here then with the black market? You have things to invent and build. Why are you hiding away here? I called in a favor to get myself back onto Liberty. I've been hunted by Teach's men. Um, I was hiding out in a safe house on Forgefall, trying to finish my plans. I have a bit of a bone to pick with the Teach's. Our history goes way back. I've been working on something to try and balance the rules of engagement, so to speak. Those plans that you mentioned, that you've seen. I'm trying to get them back, and I need Kat's help to build it. Edmund here is uh, keeping me safe for the meantime. Do you know who's yes, trying to... Yes, we need to talk about that, Lilith. Uh, I think your stay might have outworn its welcome, especially since this, uh, this morning's recent news about the murder, the black spot. Yes, yes, I know. Wait, Give me one more day, please. Spot? Lindell? What's this about black spot? Like on black your armor or like some rust or something or? On your hand. A man turned up dead no this morning. Spot. This Billy Campbell he, person. He, he had the black dead. spot on his hand. That means that the royal assassin is on Liberty. And she's hunting. Most likely myself. 
Do you know the identity of this assassin? Have you seen? No one does. But people start to turn up dead with black spots on their hands, and it is the work of this assassin. That's the rumor. But I mean, you could come stay with us. Our house is rather safe. We've got a big metal bar, and it's all magically protected. And hmm. not all, unless you've done something new. Uh, n- yeah, definitely new. It cost me a lot of money to redo it. We also have a flesh golem. But there's a serious and lack of... kind of leans forward and starts listening. He's like, oh, so what did you do to the Colchester mansion? It's not for sale. That's what No, no, wondering. I don't want to buy it. <laughs> not by any means. I'm just curious uh, how powerful... We, just exor- we exorcised a demon, rescued a man from the abyss, opened up a portal to the Feywild, and... Re- a lot of people out of it and then sealed it all up and magically protected it from anything further. We also still don't and have any bombs. That's a lot to take in. Um, we have a magical wow. garden. Uh, a ma- magical yeah, garden. Uh, okay, wait. No bathroom. What did you do to protect no the estate? Um, One thing at a time. A, we just cast a spell on it that protects it from any magical divination and or any fey, fiends, celestial, undead, etc. just can't come in, they can't bath in, they can't enter, and you know. Mm, interesting. He opens up his uh, vest and pulls a book out and starts flipping through it. Mm, yes. Uh, Hallow? Oh, you've heard of it. I have. He slaps the book shut and dust flies out and he tucks it back in his vest. Okay, uh, so he's going to say, well, Hallow is very powerful. Uh, hopefully we keep them out. Um, I'm impressed. You are a very powerful cleric. I don't know. It's a little magic. You know, it's and pretty easier. sneaky. Good at finding traps. You might be useful. I just, you know, it's it, a thing I picked up. This is all well and good, but we came out here with a specific purpose. I mean, these these people were attacked by a, a spirit, a djinn or a genie or something, and we're trying to resolve that. Do you even happen to have a hookah kicking around with you? <laughs> I can yes. procure you something to smoke if you'd like, but no, what we'll is this talk about a genie? Specific one. Well... Mildred Hopsmiller had Prunus asked us to find a magical hookah that uh, Mildred was apparently keeping in secret. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? I do not, but now I, my interest is piqued. Oh boy. I have quite a few buyers who might be interested in such a thing. He's not, He's not for sale. He, you say? You've met this genie? Both of them. The hookah and the genie. Neither were for sale. Hmm, Neither shame. are for sale. If you find it, maybe I could uh, change your mind. Apparently you might repeat this is why. day of your life time and time again. It might not be for your best interest. Interesting. Genies are very powerful creatures. Very tricky, from what I've read. He kind of likes us, I think. Mm. What does the genie have to do with anything? That is debatable. That you is have your debatable. hands in quite a few pots, don't you? Too many pots. Too many yeah. pots. And Edmund, how many pots do you have your hand in? Far more. Ones that I don't yeah, want a... my hands in. What can you? We've told you a lot about us. What else can you tell us about yourself and your ongoings with Teach and the Libranese, what did you call them? The council? Sure. Well, the council lets us operate uh, under an understanding that we will maintain the balance, not overstep, which we're pretty good at. We do favors for them every once in a while, you know, smuggling people off of Liberty when needed or onto Liberty items, people, whatever might be of use to them. And they leave us alone. They've given us this uh, nice cover and area to work with, and uh, they don't bother us. I like to keep it that way. As for Teach, he knows nothing. I want to keep it that way as well. 
I have a network of contacts, various pirates, and uh, people at my disposal for what need be. I do jobs. And not people do jobs for me. Not like it's like. I mean, and and not like it's like a competition or anything. But but what would you say is like the most powerful spell you can cast? <laughs> Interesting question. Depends on the day, what I prepare. Uh, well, uh, on any day, um, what uh, potency of spell hmm. would be the highest, uh, most powerful? That, that, version, most powerful <laughs> that <laughs> version of me you spoke with uh, earlier, that's probably one of my better spells. Version. Is that like a project image? Or... A little bit more than that. Program delusion? Uh... You know your spells. That's uh, not you know, you... I don't know. What's the name of the spell you used? If you do something for me, maybe I'll tell you. Oh, uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> I, I do like to make a spell deals. I've been shopping for. Oh my god, oh. do you have a scroll of sea invisibility? Because we've had a ton of invisible things that have been like really sniping us from the and if and if one of us could see invisibility, that would make a huge difference. Fathom looks over and he says, That lantern the little one has, doesn't that let you see it? Yeah, but like it has to be in the right position, and yeah. Yes, yada, yada. I can see invisible things within range of it when it's lit. Xavier gives up <laughs> with absolutely no prying. Not it's not for sale. <laughs> Nothing, is, Nothing sale. is for sale. <laughs> or trade. Or trade. <laughs> well, anyone can be made more powerful with the right item. Let's just put all of our powerful items away, out of sight. This is very much a you show me yours, I'll show you mine kind of operation. I'll put it that well, way. Well, I told you I can cast the Hallow spell. That's the most one of the most powerful spells I and can I cast. And I told you that I can make an illusory version of myself that to even some of the most skilled observers appears real. I think I, can think I can attach the top part of an elf to a centaur <laughs> body. <laughs> We <laughs> might have to do some experimenting <laughs> later. With that. There are some is not very interesting in individuals in my circle that might be interested in something like that. <laughs> I will be the goriest one in the room. <laughs> no one's even trying well. to fight you for that, you. No one's even trying to fight you. You, have that not a, you, can, you can just have it. You can, you can have one. You are for now. If you are in need of corpses. Centaur corpses? Perhaps. Might be of service to you. We do what come about across quite a few didn't want to go bodies shopping. in my business. <laughs> yeah. I can dig well, I can dig up corpses anytime I want. I don't need to sell, <laughs> to sell away my smuggling soul. Very well. If you're ever in need of something a little bit more hard to find. You can always what about me. that ship over there? Who does well, that, that belong ship. to? That is our own. It's our contingency plan if we need to make a quick escape. Hmm. I'm curious how oh, yeah. you're planning saving Othmal from Panopticon, seeing as... There we during... go. Yep, let's follow that plot line. <laughs> now, that is none of my concern. If this is something you want to work out with Lilith, then... Please, by all means. From what I understand, it's under your direction that he's even in this situation to be. It was under my direction to bring Lilith to liberty. Lilith is on liberty. Othmal paid his dues, but he owed one last favor. He has done it. So what would it cost to get a crew to travel to Panopticon? cost. I am very much in favor of uh, people doing deeds for me or owing me favors rather than currency. That but if we had price. to put a price on it, maybe a sum of 200. 
That's 200 platinum, 200 gold, 200 silver, 200 copper. <laughs> oh, yeah, we so, can do that. When do you want to leave? No, shut up. Wow. <laughs> oh, I mean, you I have these funds I'm... available. <laughs> well, then what would be the human cost? <laughs> well, a favor at a later date. Depends on what I need. I would call on you, you would answer. Hmm. Don't worry, it'd be something of equal value. Something and you would be compensated for the task. Yeah, we could totally Monetarily. That. It's fine. <laughs> Dal, you need to be more careful with your money. Why, why? It's just money. <sighs> <sighs> Well, I, I do like currency, but um, I tend to work in favors and rare objects. Mm. Lilith has her palm in her hand, and she just every once in a while takes a swig of wine. She's like <laughs> deep in thought. You can tell she's very ADD, and the conversation bores her. There are mm -hmm. things going on in her head that you can't even begin to understand. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we do you a favor first? Lilith is, um, I would say the opposite of an asset right now with an assassin after her. Why don't we do you a favor and take her off your hands and we'll look after her for a while. I like your <laughs> initiative. I'll tell you what, let me get my leisure and see if I have any tasks that you could accomplish for me. And if you would take Lilith off my hands, I would be very grateful. Perhaps we can work out the details of off no, no, no. And, release. I mean, like us taking Lilith off your hands as a favor to you. Mm. That's what I mean. That's going to happen regardless. Hmm. Can I take Lilith? Lilith, you know the deal. Sundown tonight. You've worn out your welcome. The house doesn't have a bathroom, just so you know. <laughs> what a terrible design. <laughs> yeah, who would design no. a mansion like that? I wonder. Who <laughs> might like private so quarters in this cave has a bathroom? <laughs> I, I propose a trade. Oh. You is going to reach into her pouch and pull out Bellick's book of research notes oh. from Otherwear. Okay. And I'll set them on the table. What is this? I will trade you this book crazy. of a crazy cultist research notes for an entrance you might know of to get us into the Colchester mansion state without being seen or heard. You just want to go back home. Oh, wait, no, not Colchester. Where are we trying to go to? I want to get to my hookah. Hobbsmiller. Oh, Hobbsmiller. Oh, yeah. Hobbs Hobbs I forgot they're all dead. So here's the thing. I thought it might be in the castle, but I cast like an object, and I didn't get a ping at all from the castle. And we're trying to find this hookah. It's magical. But, like, Mildred didn't necessarily know it was va super valuable because Prunus, when she was talking about it, they just thought it was like a cool artifact. And then they later found out that it was magical and we just need to find it. Well, where is it? That's what we're trying to figure out. It's, it doesn't sound like it's in the castle. Well, I don't so... know where it is. What do you want me to do? Oh, well, you're a smuggler and stuff. You're it's in the castle. It, it could be just in a lead box. Well, yeah, it, it could box. be in a lead box, it could be in a treasure chest, it could be in another island. No, it could be in another plane spell? of existence. Do you know, know the spell of the Leo tiny Leo chest? Secret chest. Leo secret chest. Leo oh, Leo secret, Leo secret, secret chest! Leo Leo chest. Secret chest. Yes, I do. <gasps> That's what I want. That's what I want. I want that spell. Let's push Belloc's book across the table. <laughs> I don't want any of this. I want that. <laughs> you just want a spell? What, a spell scroll, or...? Can I learn yes. it from a spell scroll, as a wizard? Yeah, you're a wizard, you can learn it from a spell scroll. 
I don't know. I wasn't around wizards growing up. You have to take the time <laughs> to jot it down, a copy of it, into your spell book, and then you can learn it. Yeah, I've never learned, yeah, I've never learned anything from a spell scroll. And I think it destroys the scroll in the process of learning. Yeah, it costs you money. Depending yeah. on what kind of spell it is, it costs you money and like certain amount of time. But yeah, any spell yeah. scroll time, you pick up, you can copy the, into your spell book. The money is the components, because you need parchment and uh, ink of very high quality to copy a spell. Especially of that high a level. Well, you're a magic user. I want the I'm spell, a wizard, I want yes. the ink. I want everything I need to learn that spell. Well, luckily okay. there are there right is now. parchment currently at your estate uh, to replace your, your bird. If you'd like more... You don't more, have any here? I can procure some. You've got this big old cave full of smuggled things. you got to have something here, right? Um, there's my own private stash, but... Uh, I don't have the scroll. Then I'll just take this other weirly book back then. Find some other people that want cultist or, spells or, or and whatnot. You, you, I think what, Xavier wants it. <laughs> you, what if we just got... Um, what if we just asked Edmund to cast the spell on the little chest that we have and returned the secret chest to us and we could just empty out the contents? That's not how it works. Oh dear. Only well, the person that creates the... It's like a phylactery, or a, a, a dummy chest. Only the person that creates it can summon it back. What? Oh, but what if they're dead? What if they're dead? Oh, <laughs> then you're shit out of luck. <laughs> yeah, Unless your that. necromancer friend can bring them back. Ooh. But you'd have to convince them to bring the real one back from the ethereal plane. Good luck. Well, that wouldn't be hard, would it? What? Who's Where? Her? Where's, where's her body? Where's her body? Do we have Mildred's body? No. The council has Mildred's body. Mildred's body is most likely buried in the family crypt. Which we know what I love crypts. Yeah, I'm we not sure not what it is. I've I've been to the Hopsmiller Castle once. Are we? That's what's that? Huh? We're not resurrecting Mildred Hopsmiller, are we? Well, please don't make us do. That. I mean, we could. <laughs> is she the one that created the dummy chest? Mm, don't know, really. I mean, for all we know, the. The genie created the chest, or one of the. Why would the genie trap itself? That doesn't make sense. Is there such a spell to find how items were created? I believe there is a very high-level druid spell called Legend Lore. I'm not sure how it works, but you can learn a lot about a thing from it. Well, none of us are druids, and none of us are that high level, probably. Mm, shame. So. Oh, my. <laughs> there might be someone on Melendor that could do it for you. Lots of druids in that area. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything um, about the arch druid going missing? Yes, curious thing. Uh, Witherstone, I believe. Yes. Not sure. Bit of a mystery. One that I haven't uh, had a need to solve. Put it that way. Cool. Um, and do you know someone named? Oh, what's the what's the water Janassi cook? Juniper. Uh, Jun Juniper. Yeah. Yeah. Do I know who? Someone named Juniper, a water Janassi. Not familiar. Okay. Damn, that doesn't make sense. David. David. Mm -hmm. We need to go. Okay. okay. Um, I've already told you twice. Our, right. our mechanic has called <laughs> and wants us to come pick up our car. All right. So Dave is ignoring me. Yes, <laughs> this is what I wanted to get to. So uh, Edmund goes up to his private chambers, gets his ledger, and brings it back down to the table and opens it up, starts flipping through, and he does find a task for you. He says, "There's a friend of mine who is also imprisoned in Panopticon. Perhaps we can help each other out." If I send you in, perhaps you could bring both back. Othmal and my friend. 
You pay for the ship and you provide a crew. I would. Into the Into Panopticon! <laughs> Who's your friend? This is the worst too hard for ever. you, then. This is a good place to stop. Wait for the <laughs> next week. And that's where we'll pick up next week. <laughs> oh my god. Worst shop, worst shop ever. Oh my god. They don't have the scroll I need. I got no paper. <sighs> But you guys made it into the Black Market Society, and you found Lilith, um, the inventor. Uh, oh whenever we play Skyrim, David always joins the Thieves Guild. <laughs> I hate the Thieves Guild. This is, this is the not thieves the Thieves Guild. Guild. This is not the Thieves uh, Guild. This is very different. Secret Society. I always join the Dark Brotherhood. Oh, this is similar, right? <laughs> Are they? Are they Jenny. the Dark Brotherhood? Okay, okay. Like so we know where Othmal is. We know Cat's on the way back. We just inherited. Go save we inherited a Lilith, who's someone's trying to kill. Right. You, we can't hear you either. Oh, it's because I closed my laptop. There we go. <laughs> Can um, have, um, Captain a ship. Does she have captain skills? Who? Huh? You. Saf? You. You. Uh, she has knowledge of... She's never been a captain, but she has knowledge of... Captain. Yeah, in, in your former life, you, you did spend some time at sea, but you were more like the hired muscle on board and like part-time cook. <laughs> So, yeah, sure. You, you know how to like bring up the sails. You know how to steer a ship. Basic knowledge. Okay. So we have a couple of plotline options. Option one, we can go to Panopticon and rescue Othmal and another guy. Option hmm. two is we can do a bank heist. Or option three is we can continue to try to find the hookah. Because we have a three-day or four-day deadline from June of, from Prunus to find the hookah. And we're here. Wait, so I think it's... Go and get the hookah first. Try to check out the estate, right? Because we don't have... Saying yes to him doesn't mean we have to go right away. I think, yeah, I think the true. hookah's there. I think even... I, I think it's in a lead box or in a lead dungeon. Yeah, it's possible. And I like the idea of, re of re um, reanimating her, too. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could definitely do that. It was an option. Um, okay, well, we'll discuss the options in chat. Oh, Sada and I have to go, to so we'll see yeah, you guys next time. If he knows about the werewolves. Yeah. See you. Oh, the werewolves. Bye. 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 Bye.